Welcome to the Be Lenore Show. Here we will discuss lifestyle, beauty, celebrity gossip, and current events in our own way. My way, Be Style. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This is V. Lenore. Welcome to the V. Lenore Show. How y'all doing today? <laughs> hey to everybody in the chat. So what I did just now, just so we're clear, I did just go live on both channels, on both the main channel, V. Lenore Show channel, as well as the V. Lenore Uncut channel, okay? Now, just so we're clear, tonight we're talking about an interesting story that has probably overwhelmed the internet, especially the black YouTube. Um, we've been talking a lot about Shirley Strawberry, uh, her husband, and some recent charges that he um, is facing. We'll talk a little bit about that in, in a minute. But tonight, we are going to be talking directly to um, the woman who has stood by his side recently as his friend and advocate. And we're going to be able to just get to know her a little bit better and find out where her role is uh, in his life and, and with this case. So with that said, I am going to shut down the uncut channel, but I'm going to play my little um, my intro again just to give you all some time to come in. I'm going to ask either Fedora. Actually, Fedora, can you go to the uncut channel and drop the main channel or this link to this video? in the uncut channel chat. That way if somebody comes over there, they can still get the link and understand we're gonna be on the main channel tonight, okay? All right, so with that said, I'm gonna play my intro, grab me something to drink, and then I'm coming right back to introduce you guys to Miss Sonia Waller, all right? So we'll be back right after this. <laughs> Welcome to the V. Lenore Show. Here we will discuss lifestyle, beauty, celebrity gossip, and current events in our own way, my way. y'all doing? Bum, bum. All right, let's see. Who's here tonight? How y'all doing tonight? Hello, 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 Fedora. Hi. Hi there, original. Just a subscriber. Welcome. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Kimberly Black. Thank you for joining us. My beautiful moderators are in the house. Hi, Dr. Lashonia. How are you? I know your own word. Thank you, honey. Another beautiful moderator. Hey, cool gamer. Hey, my girl, Q Rob. How you doing, sis? Uh, okay, okay. Hey, Shellas, another gorgeous moderator. Love it, love it, love it. Hey, dear self, are you? Okay, good, good. Hi, the tea lounge. Hey, ODS, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Hi, her daughter. Her is off work tonight. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey. Yes, ODS. Okay, we're about to get into some things. Okay, in the words of Armand Wiggins, we're going to get into some things tonight, okay? Actually, you know, I want this, again, we're going to talk a little bit about the case, of course, 
the charges um, and how Sonia uh, is helping him with this process and, you know, amongst other things. And I'll give you a chance to answer some questions. Hey, S. Hutchinson, welcome. Um, I'll give you a chance to ask some questions of your own, but just, you know, give me a little grace here at first, okay? Because I really want this to be a conversation. You know, she's done some interviews already. And a lot of the information about, um, you know, probably around the case and other people who have, you know, been a part of these cases. They've talked about this a lot on a lot of other sites. Tonight, I want to sort of focus on who Sonya is. All right. And, you know, just get a better understanding of how she sees things and and how she got involved. OK, so with that said, allow me to introduce to all of you. Oh, wait, we still on the Uncut channel, aren't we? OK, if you guys are on the Uncut channel, by the way, let me just say, come on over here to the main channel, to the main channel. All right. We'll have nice, intimate conversation. All right. So with this. Oh, oh, one other thing. You better like this damn video. Hello? You better like this video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and please share it. Please. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. With that said, I'm going to shut down the uncut channel. But guys, we'll be over here on the main channel, right? Okay. Thanks. Bye. Uh, yeah. There we go. Let's see. All right. We're still here, right? We still family? Okay. So the mother folks, they can come on over here. We're going to get started. Let me introduce to all of you. Hey, a snack and a meal. How you doing? Let me introduce to you. Oh, well, you know what? Your name on here, Sonia, you, should, you tell me how I'm supposed to introduce you. This one? Okay. So Sonia Durham. All right. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Sonia. Hi. How are you? Your volume is down kind of low. Let's see. It's low? Now it's good. Now you're good. Oh, yeah. Um, I was talking soft. Oh, okay. Hold on one second. <clears throat> All right, we're good. All right, I just wanted to be able to see the chat a little bit better. Got it. All right. Okay. So with that said, Sonia, girl... Use you too famous, girl. <laughs> In a negative way, of course. <laughs> you YouTube infamous? Is that what it is? You think that's what it is? I'm I'm YouTube popular. Let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> so um let's talk about it. Um, where are you from originally? Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. And so you're from Cleveland. But when Ernesto met you, were you living in Georgia at that time or you were living in Florida? I was living in Georgia. You, oh, you were. So you were living in Georgia. Okay. In yeah. Atlanta? In the Atlanta area? In Buckhead. I lived in Buckhead. Oh, okay. See, I'm thinking you moved there because of the case. That's not the situation. No, yeah, it is. I, I moved, I moved here for I was here for a year. Then I moved back to Miami to open up a business. Okay. And then I moved back here because my lease was up and I was going to go somewhere else. But because his case was doing what it was doing and I kept traveling back and forth from Florida here, mm -hmm. um, I came here um, to kind of help with his case. Okay. So let me understand this. So when you met him, you were living in Atlanta. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you guys only met how many times did you guys meet before he was actually arrested uh, in person yeah. period somewhere around five times in person five times in person in okay. a year and a half span in uh, year after year. i met him i was hospitalized two months after i met him okay so how many times before you were hospitalized did you get to meet him or see him twice twice okay Okay. And then you, you um, went into the hospital and you were in the hospital for how long? Um, 30, 30 something days. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. you, do you want to share a little bit about why you were even in the hospital? It stemmed from me getting shot back in 91. So in I had some, um, hmm? 
from 91. So that happened in 1991, but- It was 30 years later, I had a, um, a blockage from scar tissue that developed over the years. And so um, it was Christmas day, um, 2020, that I got sick, but then I was hospitalized two days later. Oh my goodness. And then I, I was supposed to only be in the hospital for three to five days is what I was told. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being um, a month, a month and a um, couple of days. So, so, up. so you mentioned that in 1991, you were shot. You want to tell us just a little bit about that? I know on, um, and by the way, you guys may have seen her on Tasha K, Infamous Sylvia, who is actually a, a friend of this channel. I like to consider it to be one. Um, and I, you've done some other interviews as well. Can you tell us just I think a, one other other than that? It was just Sylvia, Tasha, okay. and this one other judge, CV with the T. Just That's a people. small channel, I think. Yeah. I don't yep. I don't really follow the channels that on YouTube. Um mm -hmm. it's it's four that I, I have the biggest issues with because they always like, you know, say the most nastiest things. But um it's a lot of people that that has done the story. Mm -hmm. I just don't go on and read it or follow it. Okay. Pretty much. Unless somebody tells me, then I'll go and look at something. So tell me though, tell us just briefly. How, what happened in 1991? Oh, broke up with a boyfriend. And then um, he came over after the, you know, after we had a breakup, whatever, for one last visit or whatever. And um, ended up shooting me and several people in the house. I'm very sorry. And then he passed, um, you know, after he shot somebody, they shot him, so. So at the same event, uh, he was shot as, as well. And yeah, he was shot with one of his guns. What? Yeah. It was kind of weird how it went, but I think it was kind of like, I think he was contemplating murder, suicide, or just murder, how gotcha. it went. Yeah. Gotcha. It was just, you know. Okay. So with that said, um, let me ask you, so so. first of all, let me say I'm sorry to hear that. And two, it's a huge blessing, the fact that you are still here to, to talk about it. Um, did everyone survive? Uh-huh, everybody but him. That's a, well. Mm -hmm. So, okay, okay. So with that said, let's talk a little bit now. I, I just asked about that because I'm sure that shapes, that shapes you, you know, when, when you go through an experience like that, you can't come I'm, out of it the same. You don't think, or do you think? Well, I had like three boyfriends on the road that was kind of like that. So he just the one that actually shot me. I had a couple, you know, that was just as psych psychotic. But um, abusive. You know. Were they hmm? abusive? Were they abusive? The other two. Um. Well, they, well, you know what? Let's say one. The one right after him. Um, came over my house and put a gun to his head and said he was going to kill himself because he felt I didn't care about him. And this was right after I got shot. This was the first boyfriend after I got shot. And then there, the next one after him said he was going to kill me, that I could only, the only way I could leave him it was to die. And um, that he wasn't going to miss like the one that shot me did. So, but... Sorry. You hmm. must be really putting it on these brothers. What the hell is going on with, with, these, with you? What the hell? I'm a nice girl. <laughs> <laughs> You're a nice girl. That's what it is. Oh, no. Why are you attracting this same I'm a nice dude? girl. Well, you know, I was kind of trying to... Okay, so I was young when all of this happened. And you knew on your 20s. This all happened in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And you kind of don't... Um, kind of don't try to pinpoint stuff because you're still kind of like a young... I was kind of like a young, you know, um, just out here type of. Um, in the streets kind of thing? A, no, no, I'm going to say kid, but I was still grown. I was in my 20s. But you kind of, like how I do my children, I, I said I'm not cutting them loose so they get in their 30s. Because when you're in your 20s, you still aren't really a, a, a smart adult that, you know, you still need a lot of guidance. And so I didn't get any guidance in my 20s by 
um, any of my parents. So I um, kind of didn't put too much on the type of guy, the patterns and all of that in the moment until I got a little older. And then I kind of kind of looked at what they all had in common. And you what know? did they all have in common? Um, so it was just a type that, um, cause they all were different, but they had, they all had one thing in common. So what's the one thought. thing they had in common? What's the one they thing? They had very bad relationships with their mother. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Cause that brings up a, a, one of my questions. Did you have, or do you have a close relationship with your parents? Um, my dad, I did my mother. No. Okay. So sometimes, you know, we are attracting who and what we are or the lessons we need to learn sometimes. And maybe that was, that's because you need to heal maybe that piece of you. Maybe that's why you were attracting guys who had that void with themselves. No, well, they didn't show any signs till they showed the signs. It wasn't like, it was like calling me out my name or, or putting their hands on me. It was, it was one incident than that you know what i'm saying and then with the other person who's trying to kill himself in front of me you know um we were supposed to just hanging out i don't want anything serious and i was like fine cool no problem no pressure you know and then he caught feelings and then you know because i was still on the agreement which was this ain't gonna be serious mm -hmm. he came over with that so it wasn't like it was something i kept seeing to know he's got an issue you know, sometimes you don't know a person got an issue till you see they got an issue. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was because they were normal up until that point. But just so you know, the law of attraction doesn't care about the signs as much. It knows what's missing in you and what lessons you need to learn. And you're attracting something that needs to be healed. But we'll talk more about that later on. I had some okay? good ones, too. I didn't, all of them aren't bad. Look, I had some good ones. I bet you did. I bet you did. Um, okay, so with that said, uh, let's talk about how you met Ernesto. And for those of you that are just coming into the chat, hi, everybody. If I haven't spoke to you, I'm sure that my um, my moderators will greet you properly. Um, this is Sonia Durham Waller. So are you going by Miss Durham now? Which How you going to throw, how you going to change the name, Sonia, when you got a whole channel that's called Miss Waller? So my... The thing what it is, is because my last name, Durham, mm -hmm. that's my maiden name. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of very popular where I'm from. So I was kind of trying to be like, so Waller was a nobody. No one knows me by that name, you know? So is that a married? So you were, that's my married name. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. were married. When did you get married? I got married in 2009. Okay. How long were you married? 2014. Okay. Okay. I understand. I understand. Oh, no. Okay. Been there, done that. We dated on and off since 1989. So we were just like, um, you know. Okay. And we All still right. talk. Like we still talk. We still cool. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. So now let me just make this clear to those in the chat that may not know. I think everybody knows, but just for the, for the hell of it. Um, uh, Ernest Williams, known as Ernesto, or Nesto, correct? Nesto. 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 Um, he is the husband to Miss Shirley Strawberry, who is a co-host on the Steve Ma Steve Harvey Morning Show. And um, so tell us how it is that you became acquainted with Nesto. I met him in Buckhead, um, looking at property. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we just started, you know, talking about stuff. I don't know how we came about that. Oh, I do. I remember now. He took a call in front of me and the guy was talking to him about an RV. And then I was just listening. And then when he got the phone, I was like, oh, my God, you like RVs? And he looked at me like, yeah. And I was like, you know, I started talking about RVs. And he was looking at me like I was crazy. Like, how do you even know? And I'm like man, I've been following, you know, studying and trying to figure out what do I want to do with, you know, as far as tiny houses, RVs, all of that container homes. Cause that's where I was trying to go. Like I was trying to figure out, you know, what's my retirement or whatever. Mm 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it just kicked off from there. And then we just started vibing off of that. Okay. And just so we're clear, you said your retirement. Tell us a little bit about your professional history. Like what, what's your business? You said you went to uh, Florida to open a business. And I know you're looking at, you were obviously looking to open another business when you met Nesto. What is your background in? Right. So um, my background is construction. My dad owned a construction company for a lot of years. Um, 40, what am I? 50, 50 years he did construction. Um, so I was raised doing construction. Then I went to school after I had my daughter, um, paralegal. Mm -hmm. In my 20s, I kind of doing the, it's kind of weird what I was doing. <laughs> was, what was I doing first? I'm gonna, okay, I'm trying to think how, how this went after went to school. So I went to school. Mm -hmm. Then I started to start it. I wanted to be a cop too. It was kind of weird. I wanted to be a police really? officer. Yeah, but my, my license were suspended because when I was 17, I got into a car accident and my dad didn't fix the situation. So they suspended my license. So I, I didn't have driver's license. So they said I could, I didn't qualify because I didn't have driver's license. And so um, I started breaking the law, um, doing a little, little hustle stuff. And um, and then after that, I stopped and then I went into working for my attorney who used to, who was my attorney when I got shot. That's how I met him. And then I ended up working for him. Um, he, did, he did criminal law, family law, probate, all that type of stuff. And so I ended up working for him for a lot of years. And then I ended up going to Detroit for four years. And then I was bartending, waitressing working at a law firm. And that's how I got into clubs. Working at the law firm, got you in the clubs? No, I used to work at um, this place in Detroit. Neither one of my parents drank, smoke or did anything. So I didn't know anything about liquor. <clears throat> so um, as a side hustle, because I was never getting child support for my kid. At this point I had two. Um, I started uh, waitressing at this place in Detroit. And then in Waitressing went to bartending and then I moved back to Cleveland, started flipping houses. Um, the market crashed in 08, then I moved to Miami. When I moved to Miami, I was trying to go back into the law firms, but I didn't speak Spanish. So I ended up working, one of my friends hooked me up with um, Pops, who is um, Trick's father trick daddy's dad and oh, so he had he was running a club called diamonds cabaret which was an urban club it was upscale urban and i started working there as a door girl and i worked for the door i wanted to be a bartender but he put me on the door because i was like 38 years old at the time mm -hmm. which i was mad at first but then the door <sighs> Fifteen hundred dollars a night, so the door was cool. <laughs> I was like, oh, I ain't mad at the door, so I just <laughs> the door was good, and I only worked like a couple nights a week, and I was making good money at the door, just greeting, and you see everybody, and I was just like, wow, I like the door. And then so I ended up doing the office and the door because they knew my background. And then within six months, I was uh, working in the money room, mm -hmm. and I went from the money room to assistant general manager this was all in under a year oh wow and so you so, learned the entire business from yeah Arkansas. so i learned yeah. a lot i learned a lot from him um this was a strip club okay and so <clears throat> and at the same time he left and opened up the original king of diamonds um in miami okay. and so then i went and started working for other owners after that okay. and i did property management as well as you know, overseeing strip clubs. I worked under the owners over the managers. Okay. Now let's go back a second because two things I have a question about. One, you mentioned that um, you went to work for the attorney that was your attorney when you were shot. Why did you need an attorney when you were shot? Victims of crime. So, so you know, when you have an attorney that's assigned to work. Or, or yeah, so you know. they'll give you um, it's money that you the state will pay you for being a victim of a crime. And what they did was they just paid my bills for me. Okay, okay. And then um, the other thing you mentioned was 
uh, that you went to school to become a paralegal. So did you, act, you're an actual licensed paralegal? Yeah, I went to school. I went to, well, school's not open no more, I found out. But yeah, I went to Academy of Court Reporting in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. This okay. was in the 80s and the 90s. So it was like way long time ago. Okay. All right. But you didn't want to continue that work? Um, I like it. I kind of, you know, I was recently doing it um, as a fallback. Oh, okay. But when I got into the club business, mm -hmm. the money is, is like, uh, well, yeah. Excellent. The money's like this. Mm -hmm. You know, what you make in a month, you make in a week at a club. So okay. the money is just, the money's different. And then working in a club, like when I had worked briefly last year for this attorney, and it was just him and I. It was crazy boring. I was just like, because I was 15 years working in the club business. Oh, and yeah. I was just like, can I do this? This is so slow. This is so, oh my God, this is boring. You know, so, and then I just had to be like, yeah, maybe I just need a vacation, a work vacation. And, and kind of took it like that. But it was kind of, it was slow. Sonia, do you attract drama? You think that's you think that that you know there's some people that like a little bit of ex they call that excitement i call it drama you think you like a little drama because you had three men that brought drama you know, and now you in some drama now so i'm just asking this is the biggest drama and him and i both be like how did this even spin to this situation <laughs> um but um i don't I don't like drama. I'm very low key. I don't hang around a lot of people. Um, um, I, I don't. I don't like drama. I try to be very, you know, quiet. The person that's the quiet one in the room that you didn't even know was there. Okay. I'm not the rah rah. Oh, you know, yeah, I got a sister. That, I got a rah rah sister, but I'm not the rah rah sister. I'm the quiet one. That doesn't mean that you don't like drama. I don't like drama. Okay. All right. I'll trust you. I, I really don't. I don't. So Not unless it's on a movie. I mean, okay. okay. Again, like I said, the way we met, it was kind of weird. And and uh, and um, it wasn't like I knew he was attached to somebody. You know what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of people that's famous. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't like I, I kind of like hang in that, in that space. You know, I kind of, like I said, when I worked in the strip club business, I met some of everybody because this was before they had the NFL and the NBA strike. Remember back in 2008, they had that big strike. So we used yep. to get huge parties. It was every rapper, every R&B artist. It was all kind of ball players. It was just everybody went to Diamond's Cabaret in Miami. Mm -hmm. It was it was a very, very, very like it was a very nice club. Very nice club, and that was kind of um, well. I was in Detroit, so Detroit is kind of fun. Oh, Cleveland's kind of slow. I have not kicked it in in Detroit. Um, you said Cleveland is slow. Is that Cleveland's what you said? Slow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you compare that to all these other places, Cleveland oh, is slow. Well, yeah, I can see that. Cleveland is slow, but slow. Okay, yeah, okay well, slow. Let's, get, let's get back to Ernesto. So you met Nesto when you were going to look at a property that you wanted to rent, is that correct? There yeah, was a property, it's a, um, it's a nail salon now, but um, it used to be like a workout spot, but it had a Felice sign in the window. And um, we met, it was when we just started talking. We talked the first day, I think we talked, um, we talked, I think for three hours. Well, hold on, hold on. You went to actually go start a business. This man, you yeah. So I had I had a, a guy that I met on a dating site because I was on a dating site, and so the date turned into a business meeting. Um, and then we ended up saying we're gonna partner up and just open up something in Atlanta because he well, he did big real estate in New York. He was from New York, mm -hmm. so he he didn't know anything about the club business, and that was my background. So him and I was gonna do a gay club in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Um. And so I was looking for spaces because I was living in Buckhead. So mm -hmm. I hadn't been in, you know, to Atlanta really before. So I didn't know Atlanta. So I just okay. knew the area that I was in. Okay. So I was looking around in the area that I was in. And, and that's this location was actually maybe four blocks from my house. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so you went over there to see the property. 
because you want to lease it I or saw, buy it? I saw, I saw the property a couple of times, but this day I took the number down. I called, nobody answered, but then later that day, because the grocery store is in between, no, the grocery store is on this side, and it's, then it's a separate location, and then it's me, so I passed it. And then I saw somebody walking in, and then that's when I was like, here's my chance, let me run up and see. Because the lease sign was still up. Okay. Okay. And he had just leased it. Ah, that was the problem. Okay. <laughs> he had just and got the keys that day. He just was got the keys that day. Was he mm -hmm. by himself? By himself, alone. And, and you were alone as well? My granddaughter was in the car with me. Okay. So you get there, you find out the property that you're interested in is already leased by this guy. How did that turn? So and let, let's go back. You said your date turned into a business meeting and now a business meeting has turned into a, a relationship. A date. <laughs> ah, you spent that one. <laughs> ah, you did that. Y'all did that. Y'all spent that. So indirectly, uh, now nah, it turned into a friendship. <laughs> so let me understand this though. You, you meet him. You all are exchanging information and you talk for three hours. Did he ever say I'm married? By the way, I'm married. No, because the conversation never went there. For three hours? What is there to talk about to a stranger? Man, we talked about my history, my past, my shooting, um, business work, the bit the club business, my background in club business. Why do you tell this stranger all your business? In the first three I get hours. that from my dad. My dad can sit there and talk a, a stranger to death for hours. We used to always be in the car mad because he'd be outside just talking somebody to death. We'd be like, come on now. And he'd just be like. So, yeah. Sonia. I don't know. Sometimes you just you just click with a person. I mean, that's not the first time that's ever happened. But sometimes you just click with a person. And, and he basically was listening for the most part. I think he chimed in after we stopped talking about RVs. He chimed in one or two times very briefly. But mainly he was just like, okay, real, he's listening to you. You know, you know what they say. I teach a communications class, mm -hmm. and what they say is, the person in control of the conversation is the one that's doing the least amount of talking. He was listening. He was learning you during those three hours. What you think? Yeah, he had to because I was talking. He was listening, so he had to be learning. <laughs> <laughs> Would you learn? Did you? Okay. Well, tell me this. What about, or what? No, let me go back. I got to assume that if I'm talking to a man, I don't know from Adam and he has three hours to spend talking to me on the phone after we just met. No, this was in person. Y'all sat and talked for three hours. You with you and the, the grandbaby too? Poor baby. How no, 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 no. She, she got dropped off. My, my oh. daughter came by and got her. So no. Um, okay. Okay. Three hours in person. Oh, okay. Okay. So that feels like a kind of like a date. No. There wasn't none, no drinks or food involved, so no. Well, he, <laughs> he obviously he knew he had a good feeling that you were probably single. I'm guessing you were single. Were you single? No, I told him when I'm so I did mention that I was engaged. Oh, that's right. You remember? Did. Okay. All right. Because I, I would, I'm not, I don't do old, I wasn't into old people. So I, cause I, when I looked at him, you know, I was just like, you know, he's old because, you know, he looks old. So does he look didn't old? Know, didn't I know. So didn't know we were three years apart, but I, I, I was dating, um, always, always dated extremely younger people than me. Cause I'll so. be honest, when I look at him, I don't think, oh, that's an old man. Now, when he starts talking, he reminds my, me of my family in Georgia. He reminds me of my, my uncle. My I used to always say that. My, my, my great grandmother's brother. I mean, son. So my great uncle. He's reminds me of my great uncle. Yeah, he's got that but, old vibe to me, but he doesn't look particularly old to me. You know what I'm saying? I say he's, his voice sounds older than he looks, yes. but his conversation yes. is young. That's yes. how I feel like it is. Okay. His conversation is young. You know, young is a sense of young is immaturity. not in his fifties. He don't sound like he's in his fifties. But what um, I'm saying, what I'm asking is, does it, when you say his the way he talks is young, do you mean like he's kind of 
Do you think he might no. be more mature? No, it's not that. Not that. Like how I can sound. Yeah. Like I, I like how I talk. Like I don't feel like I sound like somebody's grandma. You know? Mm -hmm. When I talk to people, and when I talk to people and I'm, you know, chit chatting it up, and I'll, you know, say my daughter's 36, and they'll be looking at me like, your daughter's 36. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I know I don't sound too young, but I don't think I sometimes or all the time sound like I'm in my 50s unless I'm lecturing, in which I lecture my kids. So, hold on one second. Um, her daughter, do we have a problem? Oh, okay, never mind. Okay, never mind. Okay, never mind. All right, I'm so sorry. Okay, so with that said, okay, girl, so let's, when did you find that, before you found out that he was married, let me not even go there just yet. When did you know that you were attracted to him? At the end of the three hours of talking to him. Okay, okay. And what was it about? Kind of attracted to him. Yeah. Trying to remember. Kind of, yeah. not all the way in. Yeah. Because I was, I had just broken up with my ex maybe in July. This was the end of October. But I had just had a birthday in September. And then my ex um, took me out for my birthday. And we went and did dinner and gifts and all types of nice stuff. So we were kind of still on the phone, you know, it wasn't like a breakup, I don't talk to you no more type of scenario. You get me? Yeah, yeah. So okay. it was, so I was kind of still, you know, yeah, occupied. Knew I wasn't getting back with him because we're 23 years apart. So I knew I wasn't getting back with him. What? But that's why I said I, I wasn't dating people my age. So, He's twenty. He's uh, he's he was born a day after I got shot. So how weird is that, right? <laughs> Girl, it should have been a sign. Okay, but anywho, he's but, a sweetheart. Look, he's a sweetheart. I'm sure he is. He's a baby. What the hell? He's You're a child. What you talking about? So you said your daughter is how? I've dated a lot of guys. Like my other ex just turned. His birthday's today, actually. I gotta say, happy birthday. And he just turned forty today. What? We're, so wait we're, six, we're 15 years apart. Y'all 15 years apart. But mm -hmm. that other one, he's he's younger than your daughter? He's in between my kids, yeah. <laughs> he's uh my, my son will be 24 and my daughter's 36. Okay. So they're in between. He's in between. Wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> Trillery. <laughs> she said, wow, I can't do it, but wow in my Nesto voice. <laughs> That's why I said when I met him, I was just like, he old, you know? <laughs> I guess he is old then. Hell yeah, he old, I guess. I was like, he he old. Because I just always, I, since I was in my 30s, I've always dated younger than me, so. Jesus. You know? Okay. So younger, you younger, you younger, younger. Of, you knew you were kind of attracted to him after that, um, after that meeting. Did you guys just start talking on the phone, like, immediately after that? Yeah, so we talked on the phone right now. Stop after since the, since I met him. Okay, did you yeah. guys? And, and then so you said there was two months in between the time that you met him and you went into the hospital, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And you saw him how many times between uh, meeting him and going into the hospital? I saw him twice before I went to the hospital. Okay, and then once and, you were in the hospital, and, did he come to see you? No, it was COVID. Couldn't come see. Nobody can come visit. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You were yeah. here a month. A whole month with no visitors. Oh my Lord. It was the worst. I know. I'm sure. What am I doing? Uh, so I that means me. your phone conversations have even more power or more power. So I couldn't really talk on the phone because I had a nose tube in me and um I was I was really messed up in the hospital. So he would just text me every day. Text me every day. You know, how are you doing? What are the doctors saying? Why are you still there? You know, how did surgery go? Because okay. I just, you know, I had a lot, a lot of stuff done. So okay. okay. Yeah. So it was mainly texting me. 
than anything because I really wasn't talking on the phone too much. I couldn't really talk. Okay. So you, you weren't really talking to him then. It was all about the texting correspondence. It was, more, it was more texting when I was in the hospital, yeah. Once you got out of the hospital, how soon did you see him after that? Or I did got you? out around February 1st, um, and then I saw him in April. Okay. All right. So you saw him in April. And then how long between the time that you saw him in April was he arrested? The very next year. I saw him once in 21, which was April. And he sat with me for like four hours and we watched. I can't think of the name of that damn show. We watched some show that he loves to watch and I never seen it before. Um, Cause I was still like, it took me almost, it took me like a year to get somewhat normal from, you know, back into how I was. The doctor said three months, but it took a year. So that was um, two months after I got out the hospital. I was still like 80 pounds and like, like, you know, cropped over or whatever. Um, and then, you know, my stomach was, I had two major surgeries. So my stomach was still left open. Um, cause I had a lot of outpatient therapy. Um, and then I, I didn't see him until the next year, April, it was a whole year. I went without seeing him. I saw him that next April. And then I saw him once in May and then he got arrested in July because I was the end of 21. I started going to LA a lot for my niece's skit thing. I was doing skits with her. And then, um, well, wait February, a minute. I started looking at, looking at locations for my sports bar. So I was oh, looking wait. in Miami. I was looking in, I went to hold on, hold on one second. Let's go back though. You mentioned that he came to see you in April, sat with you for four hours that day, and you didn't see him again till the next year. Why? Man, I was avoiding him. I wasn't trying to catch feelings. <laughs> I made sure I didn't want to go around him. I didn't have a problem talking to him on the phone. But once I found out he was married, we had a conversation, and I was like, I'm not, we can be cool. I just don't want to catch feelings for you, when you know, because I'm not out? trying to get all caught up. Hmm? When did you find out he was married? Uh, two weeks after we met. Okay, so how did that come up? Two weeks after you met him, you find out he's married over the phone, obviously, or in or when you met up, or how, how'd you find this out? In person. How'd it come up? He brought it up. What'd he say? <laughs> oh. In some words, he said he was married. What were the words? I don't want to say what the words was because it didn't. I, I I didn't understand how he put it. It did. It wasn't normal to me how he said it. So try us. Uh uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, me and these words. Trust me, it didn't sound. It didn't. But I still was like upset, but even though the way he told me, I was trying to understand how, why did like huh like that don't make sense how he said it. Um, but he said it and then, um, and what'd you say, man, I was pissed because, you, you know, <laughs> huh? cause you were already trying to catch a little, a little bit of feelings. Cause you wasted my time on some things. So, um, yeah. I was pissed and then I, I went home, I texted him, blocked him. Do not call me no more. Lose my number. I'm good. And then a um, couple of days, a week passed. And for some reason, I just kept thinking about him. And then I was like, you know what? I ain't going to be mad, mad, but um, we just going to be cool. And that's what I told him. I was like, we're just going to be friends. And I, that's why I was like, I'm not going to go around you. I said, because I don't want nobody falling in love. I don't want nobody catching feelings. I don't want to make this messy, you know, of a situation, but we can be cool. And that's How what that work out for you? Before he got arrested, it worked out fine. Oh my God, it worked out fine because I never saw him. And talking to him for two minutes on the phone, and he's cool. Ain't no pressure, you know? But then well, when. Let me understand this. Why do you have to maintain any kind of relationship with a person who just told you two weeks in that he's married? Why would I, you I have, to continue? Because one, 
I have right now currently about three males, three males that I'm, I'm super tight with okay. and two of them are married. So I do have married friends. Are you talking that are male? I'm cool with, well, my one friend, me and his wife, we just met at the wedding. I spoke to her like, um, right before they got married. And then I met her at the wedding because he just married her last summer. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but we're still like, it's just as tight as we was before they got married. It was, we never did anything, you know, had any type of romantic, you know, he's been my friend since 2011. Mm -hmm. So, um, we just always been cool. That was just always my boy. Um, and then the other one I've known me and him been cool for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He's been married for 30 years. And me and his wife are cordial. Cordial. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why is it just cordial? Um, because again, I don't really see him. He lives in Detroit. I don't see him like that. Um, but I do talk to him a lot. Uh-huh. So, you know, we had dinner together, me, him, and the wife, and all of that type okay. stuff, you know. So we're cordial. I mean, we ain't hey girl, da -da 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 -da, call me okay. type, you know. So. Now, the reason why I asked that is because, okay, so you're saying you were never romantically linked to either of those male friends. Mm -mm, no. And then when I got married, my husband had female friends. I didn't like, oh, okay, so now, you know, you can't see girls. You can't, whoever you're cool with, you can't be cool with them. Like, I was not that person. I didn't care. You know, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. So the thing of it is, in my mind, the way it works, because I was raised by more so my dad so I kind of think more like a man than more like a woman on a lot of things mm. I just feel like if a person gonna cheat they gonna cheat you can meet somebody sleep with them the same day it doesn't have to be somebody you're friends with that you end up in bed with you know so oh, that's true that's true I, yeah I didn't have a problem it was it was when I got cheated on in life with relationships it was always somebody they just met it was nobody they was cool with because they I've never put that stipulation on nobody I've ever dated so they never cheated with friends. They always cheated with the new chick they met at the restaurant, at the grocery store, at the red light. You know, it was never somebody that was already in their life. Okay. And the way I think about it, if something was going to happen with somebody, it was like it would have transpired, you know, not came about, even though I met him after he was married, you know, yeah. not before he was married. But, but at the same the thing. time, hmm? here's the thing, though. Here's the difference with Nesto you know that you're meeting him even though you went there for business the business thing was done in the first five minutes of your conversation so y'all spent three hours together that day and then two weeks pass you know romance is 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 what's leading this relationship at this point and then you find out he's married why continue dealing with him at all Cause he was cool as a person. And I just felt like I could, I could be his friend and I don't have to go around him and I can control, you know, my emotions. Cause I, you he know, he didn't want to be your friend though, Sonya. Huh? He didn't want to be your friend. He was okay. He said, okay. And he never, he never divvied outside of what I said. He never, you know, the stuff that I said, he never pressured me to, to run into him. You know, he asked on a couple of occasions and I was like, eh -eh. you know, I ain't going around you. And he would laugh and I'd be like, nah, dude, I ain't coming around you. <laughs> I'm good. You know, what you talking about? I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm not coming around you. So I'm like, we good. We good just being phone buddies. So I was phone buddies. Okay. But you, I mean, you got to know that you're still, if you're phone buddies, because that's the thing about that, that talking, that communication, that phone stuff. I feel like that penetrates a woman's heart more than a man. Like, I think, and more than like physical touch. Like, I really feel like it depends. We weren't having intimate, girl, we, we weren't having boyfriend, girlfriend conversations where we would talk. That's the thing. It was, How's your day? How's the restaurant? All right, bye. That was it. It wasn't like, you know, I miss you. When can I see you? It wasn't all that boo type conversation. It but was Tanya, just having that. Said, I'm about to call you Tanya. Sonia, but here's the thing think about it like this. You may have said you just wanted to be friends, but trust me, he stayed around because he was going to change your mind. They always are thinking they can change your mind, that if they just lay and wait and play that role, 
as soon as an opportunity presents itself, they will slide right. They think they can slide right in. He was doing that to you. Now, that doesn't make him a bad guy because of that. No, a lot of these dudes say, do that. I can't just, say that because... His text messages, when you look at me and him's text messages, it could look like it's two girls talking. It's 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 none of that, you know, boo this, that, and the other, and da da da. It's it's none of that type of and then plus I'm dating all the while. We would talk about my dates. And I don't even know why they didn't play that because um, you know, when I was in Florida, I was on dating sites and I was dating and going out on dates, and me and him would talk about them on the phone, you know, about my dates. I don't know why they've never played none of those calls, but we would always talk about the guys I'm seeing and this, we would talk, just talk like we was just cool. Okay. We didn't talk about him and what he was doing because he had already said he's married. I, I didn't ask anything about, you know, how's that going or, you know, this, that other. Only time I would ask him something about is when he's not at home. Then I would say, why aren't you at home? It's 11 o'clock. It's 12 o'clock at night. Why are you outside? What you doing? You know, mm -hmm. and that would be it. Other than that. And you what know, would his answer be? Why was he outside 11 o'clock at night and he got a whole wife at home? Why was he out? Um, he was keep, he and was calling your ass at that. I would be, he so, was, uh -huh. he was, I, I was in town. I wasn't in town at the time. I was in Florida at this time. I was in Florida. So I wasn't even there. But still, why he calling you at 11 o'clock instead of being at home with his wife, who was probably in bed getting ready to get up the next morning for her show? Um, well, so at this time he was dating the other girls, so he wasn't even, Girl, you know what I'm saying? You know he was dating girls? You, did you I didn't know till I read the warrants. I didn't know nothing about the relationships that he was having. I never asked him what he was doing. You know, what you doing out here? Are you dating? Da, 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 da. I assumed he was faithful to the wife. Okay. So let's get, well, you, how could you assume that this nigga, uh, man, sorry, I didn't, didn't think I didn't put too much thought into that situation. I was doing other things. I was trying to open up a business. You know, and I was dating and I was like, he would, he again was this part of my life. He was about that much of my life. So it wasn't like no whole focus on him. Only I thing that kind of rang an alarm was because he called every day, like a, like a breakfast call, you know, you get his coffee, he'll call and say, da, 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 a five minute call and he hang up and then the call stopped. And then I was like, something ain't right, you know, and that's when he got arrested. And I was just like, he always okay. calls just to say hi. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. So you said you you uh, uh, saw him once in 2019. Was that right? I didn't know him in 19. I met him in 20. Okay, you saw him once in twice. 20. Twice, twice in 20. Once in 21. Once in twice in 22. When did you guys in 22? After now, that means you've known him at, at this point about a year. A year and a half. Y'all been talking daily. You're clear that he's married. How did you all in, in, get into engage in this this physical encounter you had? Because you that guys happened. Didn't, that happened in twenty. The one time you saw him. No, twenty. The second time I saw him. Girl, what? what? Sonya. We were three hours in. What are you talking about? No. <laughs> we had three hours of conversation. Her daughter, her daughter's always, I can't, this is my moderator. Shut up, girl. Shut up, her daughter. <laughs> tomorrow okay. is not promised. No. <laughs> Lord, but see, if tomorrow's not promised, I dare sure there would be caught when Jesus come in the bed of a married man. I girl. did not know he was married. I'm under the impression that he's single like I'm single. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me this Negro slept with you? Before he, he didn't sleep. He was no, he didn't. No, he, it wasn't an overnight thing. That wasn't overnight, was it? I ain't got no good memory. I don't think that was a. Yeah, that was overnight. That was overnight. So where did this take place? I just want to know. Look at it. In it, like, it, what did he have an apartment? Was it at his? I had an house? apartment. No. So he came to your. I had an apartment. Hmm? Oh, he came to your place. Yeah, I had an apartment. I lived alone. My kids were grown and gone. Okay, because I was under the impression it happened in like an RV or something. No, we we talked in his RV okay. when I when I saw him on some other times, but no. So you met. We him. was talking in the RV, and he said, "Go in the back," and I was like, "No." <laughs> 
the first time we right and i was like no like well, we just we was I, like i just met you and we just was talking about all kind of like non-romantic type situations and all that type of stuff i was like that'll be weird now i'm i'm more perplexed because you said you met him y'all spent that day together three hours talking getting to know each other then i'm assuming y'all are on the phone non-stop and then the next time you see him we you wasn't said, on the phone nonstop. Um, okay, so, okay, but that's even worse. I'm trying to help it. Okay, yeah, well, no, help we it. wasn't on the phone nonstop. Then um, that's worse because I'm gonna tell you why it's worse. So then you you telling me y'all did you jumped right into the? I mean, I'm not judging you for wanting to engage with him, but for you have not to even ask whether or not he was either seeing somebody or married, knowing how he's. You know what? Him. I just assume if a person went there, you got to be single. That's just my why being naive. Why you think that? Man, I just be thinking people move like I move because I, I, I. He's so. a dude. He has a dick. Do you have a dick? Because that's no, how I they don't. work. <laughs> that's how they think with them things. Okay. Let me try. You know what? Call me napping on that one. But I, I, I really like. I don't know, what was my head at in that period of my life? What was I thinking about? I don't know. I don't know. I was. You well, know what? It could have been too. You know what it could have been at the same time because i was not looking to be in a relationship so i wasn't really asking relationship questions or like you know what i'm saying because i wasn't really interested but at the same time i'm assuming you not with nobody because you in my face like this maybe that's where i was at but i know i wasn't trying to yeah, you, you know, know be in no relationship Sonia, hmm? we ain't no spring chickens okay i'll be 54 i had to think about it i'll be 54 next month Okay. Ain't no way in hell I'm going to assume. Now you, and you worked in nightclubs too? I, you can't tell yeah, me. Yeah, I worked in night, but I worked in, I worked with dude. females. I worked with strippers and stuff like that. Yeah, you worked with females, but men came. Men came, but I really wasn't, I didn't really engage with the guys because again, I was over the managers. The managers would talk to the customers. I pretty much dealt with the finance, the structure, but and I kind of dealt with the girls because the guys was always trying to screw them. So I would deal with the girls a lot. Okay, you may have dealt with the girls a lot. I get it, but you had to know in our fifties how these niggas work, how they how they function. And I, I when I say that, I mean I men are just like that. because he was an old man. I, I I wasn't thinking he was moving like that. You Maybe that's what it was. I, that's, I, I can't that's call that's it because I don't know what my I can't a thousand percent say. Maybe because he was old. I didn't think he was moving like that because, you know, people grow old and they get slow. Maybe that's what I was thinking, that he wasn't young and out here doing it all and he might be old and slow. But he wasn't. He was old and, and doing it like he was young. And that was even a shock to me. When I read the... um About the liquid When wire. I read the warrants and found out about the other women, I was shocked because in my head, I thought he was a faithful husband. He can't be a faithful husband because he just fucked you. No, this was this was after all of that. Like you know, we agreed just to be cool, you know. But y'all agreed to be cool though. But I never you. asked him like, "What you do? What you out here doing?" Like you know, you see, like you cheating. I never, I never ever asked him anything about what his him and his penis was doing. Girl, you killing me. It wasn't my place because you know we just friends. So, but I just assumed. It's your place if if I lay I down. I just assumed bed, that, it's my him, place. that he was just a married person, you know, being married. I didn't because I was well, shocked. I, I mean, if it's on the phone calls. I was shocked. I was like, boy, I wasn't shocked like mad, but I was just shocked like, oh my, I thought I thought because I thought he was a faithful husband. Call me naive. But I was just, Very. I was like, damn, you was doing, you was busy in 22, 21, 22. And he started laughing. And I was like, you know boy. About. That's only huh? the stuff you know about. There's, trust me, there's. It could be, be something that ain't even documented. Ain't no telling. That's what I'm saying. Ain't no telling. Exactly. Yeah, ain't no telling. How? I mean. So, okay, we talking about <laughs> this encounter. You all right. Don't, do don't just make that be right. I'm thinking, yeah, maybe. It might be okay. some more. Okay, but let me say this. Let me say this. I know, and, and I'm only bringing this up now because we're here talking about this little encounter. And I'm not trying to get in detail of your intimate business, but I would be curious to understand when you heard in the warrants about, was it in the warrants where it talks about toys and 
liquid Viagra and stuff like that. Did you see <laughs> any of those things? It's Charles? in the warrant, but it doesn't talk about the use of it. Just said he possessed that at the time of the arrest. It was it was well, in that's his bag. For me to know he uses it, he wouldn't have it if he didn't use it. I mean, he it, it it was right. It was on him when he got arrested. They they um. They mentioned it, right? Which oh, um, um, he had other that? things on him that they could have mentioned. I think they were just trying to be messy when they did that because it was no need to mention that because they weren't illegal items to have. And then we was in court and we asked, they asked, did you test the items to see if, if any of the victims situation was on there? And she was like, no. So what was the whole point in bringing it up? You didn't well, test it. You. you didn't try to link wait, it to wait, anything. Wait, girl, you veering off. The, come back, come back. I want to know: Did you see any of these things? Or did I never? I never ever. Um, never um, with the Viagra thing. No. No. Okay. Toys. Yeah, yeah, but not the Viagra thing. Okay, um, so the toys did happen. And you know what? Too, but then I've never like. I've never dated nobody that old or, you know, dealt with nobody that old. So, um, hi, love, love. Let me say this. Love, love is saying what I said. Faithful husband messing with you. How? So he can't be faithful and talking to you on the phone. Listen, me and him was not having a, um, Thank when you, we, love, when love. we decided to be friends, we weren't having messy conversations. And again, that was a, a, a one-time thing that I was like, eh, we ain't doing that no more. So I don't know if that was a one-time thing that he just happened to, because you know, some guys cheat one time. It's not, you know, you got people that only cheat Sonia. one time. He, he, I didn't know he was a serial cheater. Sonia. You know, Sonia. he's a serial cheater, but I didn't know at the time. Again, I didn't ask. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so let's let's move on now. I'm wasn't my business. Here. Once I said we just gonna be cool and friends, wasn't my business, because my other friends whatever they out here doing i don't, I don't even ask because their penises once i say we friends their penises is not my business but i don't even that, ask it. but if it I ain't touch it, let me say this it was your business with, before all that shit happened it was your business and next time don't let that happen again you better ask the right questions okay <sighs> Oh, I do now. I'll be on it. I'll be like, are you single, single, single? Like, <laughs> okay, all right. Because so I don't, man. Let me ask you this. Okay, so once he was arrested, you're saying that was the first time that ever happened to me. Okay. Why people keep trying to ask, um, do people are people afraid to bring their men around you? I'm like, girl, please. Uh, no, that was the first time I ever did anything with somebody that was somebody's situation. Never date people that got girlfriends, fiancés, or wives. That just was a slip up. That was one of my questions. That was, was a slip up. Hmm? Okay, slip up. Uh, that was going to be one of my questions, honestly. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Mm. So let me let, let's move on. So by the time you uh, or I'm sorry, by the time he is um, arrested, you've seen him five times. Y'all talked or text on the phone pretty regularly. And then he's arrested. So you find out he's arrested because you said you didn't get a call. How did he call you? I'm just curious. He would call like a breakfast call in the morning, like start your day, like a start your day call. By I mean from jail, from jail. When I found out he was in jail, I wrote him because he didn't know my number. It was a month that he was in jail. Um, I was you, like around you know, August 29th. Hmm? Hold on, hold on. When when that happened, were you back in Florida? I was in Florida still. Okay, so you're in Florida at this time and he's in jail here. Got it. Okay, so you wrote him a letter when you found out where he was? Okay. How long does it take the mail to get to him? Like weeks or? That might have took him like three days to call me after after I mailed it. Maybe three, four days. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. But it was a paper thing. It wasn't. I didn't know about the digital stuff they got going on. Okay. I sent him an old school <laughs> letter in the mail. Mm-hmm. And um, he called me. And I was like, why are you still in jail? Because I could see how when he got arrested and everything. I'm like, why are you still in jail? All your stuff is bondable. Well, wait, wait, wait. At that time when he was arrested, how many charges did he was he facing at that time? Two? And what were those two charges? When he first got arrested, he had a warrant from Calvin, which was the theft by deception. Is that um, the one about the car? Is that dealing with the no, car? No, no, no. Okay. Okay, so he had... Somehow with that car situation, that that situation is, is squashed because that's not even one of his charges. 
Hmm. Now, okay. that situation is squashed. Um, okay. He had the... Um, he had the one thing with yeah that one thing with Calvin, and then they went and did and then they went and pulled a, a search warrant on the ninth. They executed a search warrant, and they ended up arresting a co-defendant because of whatever she had in her house. But he didn't. The house he thought was his, mm -hmm. they didn't turn up anything. It was her house that turned up some stuff that she was doing. Okay, so wait a second. Let's go back. You said the two charges was. Theft by deception, and that was exactly what again? Explain what that meant. That was a guy saying that he walked in his business and offered something about homes for vets and credit repair. And which again that warrant was okay. It was it was stating like they were strangers when they actually they were they they knew each other because they used to work together. So okay. Okay. It was it's very questionable the warrant, but um, that was the only one he had at the time. And then when they did the the, the search warrant thing, then they arrested Erica, and that's when they brought up the conspiracy charges with them two together. Okay, so the two charges was the theft by deception, and then the conspiracy conspiracy of what though? Conspiracy to all the stuff that she actually did. So Which when she what? filed documents in the court they said he conspired with her when she showed up in court and pretended to be a lawyer they said he conspired with her that's right so, so every time she went in there and pretended they said he conspired with her so that's was, what the conspiracy charges are i was watching something recently that was talking about he so she was posing as his lawyer correct now they knew each other for years though right like decades didn't they so people always try to say it like they was like this. Um, well, they kind of had to be. Okay, his wife didn't know her. Uh, his wife don't know you either. Y'all trying to say they've known each other for 10 years. I just met him. And I was out of town the whole time and sick. So no one was going to know me because I was sick the first year. And then I was out of town the second year. I never was introduced or met anybody whenever I saw him. It was always just him by himself. So... I was never around to meet anybody. She's from here, not from here, but she stayed here. She's been here forever, Erica. And then if if they live next door, like people tried to say, and yeah, she's on his page three said. times. She he got her on his, his page three times, his IG page. Yeah, but, so that's um, what I'm saying. But he knew her for 20 years, and they are partnering on some stuff. And she's he trusts her enough to have her come in there. And she's pretending to be a lawyer. Now, you're not going to tell me he didn't know she wasn't a lawyer. I can't ask that question to him, and I don't know. Right. Um, only thing that I said about that with him, because I don't know, he's never mentioned anybody to me before he went to jail, so I don't know what their relationship was. Um, I only assume that they weren't that close as people tend to want them to be. I think they were close on some things but i don't think they were close where so she know the kids he's you know coming over here and then da, 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 da type stuff you know i don't think they were up i don't believe they were personally close okay so only um, because like i said he caught me when he, when he first got when that first when he went to court for that charge and they were reading off the charges and they were talking and they read off her name he he didn't know who it was. He he thought they had the wrong person in there with him. So if for them to for for him to be that close, mm -hmm. for them to say, like everybody trying to assume they're that close, um, he would know her married name. It's her married name, and he didn't know it. He thought he she thought. Well, hold he on, only hold had on, hold on. Before we go there, I don't even want to get into what he says he knew or didn't know. Let's just let's just talk about it like okay, if I'm I'm pretending like I'm you. In this moment, and I'm I'm learning these things, right? I'm learning about these charges that this man that I don't really know has, right? He's got two at this time. He only has these two. One is the credit repair thing, okay. Um, the other one is uh, well, I'm sorry, what was the other one? The second one, the conspiracy oh, charges, the conspiracy of what she was doing, which was also mm -hmm. a sort of like scamming kind of situation, right? Per se, quote unquote. Well. Yeah, this is this is uh, 
August, September of 22. Right. Okay. So when you look, so you're learning these two things. And I guess in your mind, you're thinking, well, if he says he's innocent, we'll just see how this plays out. Is that what you were thinking at that time? And you were just going to support him as a friend and believe what he said about it? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll give you yeah. that. Now, when these other charges came down, which are much more serious, right? We've got- In January, the CP charge came. CP, and yet you guys, were, as you know, we're talking about uh, child corn, corn, you know, on the cob. And the other one is um, SA, right? Is that didn't come in, that didn't come out till July of 23. Okay. So now let's, let's talk about the fact that now you're learning about these, these charges that actually sound very heinous to hear about, right? Mm -hmm. And now here's this man. So A, he didn't tell you he was married until after you slept with him. So that's, de that's deception. He omitted truth there. Because by not telling you, it, he lying. As far as I'm concerned, when you omit the truth, you lie. And he omitted that on purpose so he could do exactly what he did with you. Okay. He knew better. He didn't have to go because he knew he was married. Right. But that's just, that's deception. So then you, and you don't know this dude. You really it's, don't know. It's him. not deception because I didn't ask and, and get the wrong answer. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So you I don't, don't feel like I don't feel married. like it was deception. I just feel like he knew better. And he shouldn't have <clears throat> on that. I don't I feel like it was deception. deception. I just feel like by him being a married person, that's deception. He knew better. Yeah, no better because he was deceiving his wife and you in that moment. It'd be different if he told you and then you guys agreed to. Okay, I don't give a shit, and then you go do what you do. But that's not what he did. He didn't even give you that option. And that's what I got. That was part of the argument that I gave him. Exactly. <laughs> my let argument me, was I don't do quick. that. And let you me messed my that. record up because I went my whole life not ever doing that. And that was an issue. That was more of an issue with me than, you know, because I was like, I ain't never did that before. And I pride myself on never being that person. And then I get 50, what was that, 52? Yeah. Screwed my record. So. <laughs> That, well, that listen, I let, me, let me say this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. AFV uh, Media, thank you so much for your super chat. Uh, they want me to ask you about about the Hazel and Miss Jones, Jones thing. I don't know anything about that. That girl said it was 2016. I didn't meet him till 20. Okay, okay. And then her daughter, um, my my other moderator said, you know, it's civil. So, you know, it's what's civil? civil? When you were talking about they trying to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I talked like a couple attorneys agreed with me on that. So nah. Anyway. <laughs> well, are they his attorneys? The ones that uh, they were speaking, him? they were speaking to me on behalf of his charge, his cases and stuff. Yeah, they were oh, not not the ones he have them? now. This was this is a couple of attorneys that I talked to that I was trying to I was going to hire for him that do criminal law here. And then I spoke to, like I said, I spoke to a prosecutor and I spoke to um a couple of police officers. And like they said, they got to prove that the relationship had criminal intent and how they try to spend it in court. She was trying to say, oh, he you, he walk up to women and say, my wife is this in hopes of trying to woo them and con them. And I was like, why would you pick a woman that looks like she's not doing financially well? Because there's a lot of women here that's winning, driving nice cars, carrying bags, you know, looking like money. So why would he choose somebody that didn't look like that if, if it was a scam? You're going you're to gonna go after the, the, the prize if you're scamming people. You're not going to go after somebody that looked like they're not doing all that well financially. So that's how you choose. You think that's how people choose their marks all the time based upon just their appearance alone? Common sense would tell a person. This is the thing. If you look at the lifestyle of a person like when when I met him, my bills were like seven thousand dollars a month. If if you got bills that are ten thousand, fifteen thousand a month, and you're trying to scam somebody, you're not scamming nobody that's struggling. That's not true. 
Now I'm gonna tell you why. It's a waste of time if you, if if your no. mentality feels the need to scam somebody that's struggling. Because let me, let because me explain it, something to you. Most people who get scammed are not rich people. Rich people are not the folks getting scammed. It's the poor people that get scammed. And if you have a credit, I'm just saying that you said listen. he didn't have this business, but let's if say he, if, if, if it let took him. Example. Hold on, hold on. Let me give you an example. If you've got a credit repair business, that already tells you somebody's not doing well. Because they got he, bad Okay, credit. so he said he didn't have one. So they didn't even have a, an official name. They didn't have it under the thing. They, he didn't show up with a card. And again, like I said, that whole situation with Calvin didn't even make sense because again, Calvin was a barber that worked in a barbershop with him. So why that whole, like I said, that whole warrant didn't even make sense. He didn't come in and meet him and say, hey, I got a credit report. Da, 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 da. He knew him as I work in the shop with him. He worked in his shop. So he was an employee. And then they said, oh, he picked him out of a lineup. Like it, they, it's, it, it's, it's worded as if there's two strangers who just met and he sold him this dream and he gave him some money. And I really didn't know him when, in fact, he did know him very well. So does that let's say he know him for 20 years. If what he says is true, that he gave this person, he, he was sold a dream and he bought it hook, line and sinker. Does that make a difference? Well, the thing, no, what well, the thing of it is, is because of, of the facts of certain things, the, the big facts of that piece of paper, I, I, I doubt everything on it because okay. they, they could have just told the truth. If it was an honest if this is what happened and it's a, and it's a flat out crime, then why didn't you word it truthfully? Why did you word it like this and try to make it seem like he just walked in and, and introduced to be this? They were under the impression of at the time. Maybe hmm? that hasn't been disclosed to them yet. Maybe whoever wrote the warrant, it hadn't been disclosed to them. The truth. He had to write the warrant the way the guy told him because he's, he's talking to a stranger. So why would the, the police could have only gotten what's on the warrant from the person who That's gives an information? Saying. That's my point. Which would be the victim. It's so if the victim point. said this, right. So if the victim said this, this, that, and the other, mm -hmm. it just doesn't make sense. Okay. Well, so I, I, I throw it out. Whenever the, the paper don't make sense, I just throw it out. Like, I, I can't believe anything on it because he introduced well, himself as Hold on now, Sonia. Now that, that's very, very contradictory. Go ahead. Because but, the man deceived you. And this man is cheating on his wife. So if you can't, he his wife can't trust him. What makes you think you can trust him? And now he's got these charges. These Again, charges like I said, I'm, that that's not contradictory call? because no, I'm not. I'm not the, him aside because he hasn't even said anything past I didn't do it. That's all he said. He didn't say he didn't know these people. He just said I didn't do it. Right? Which he says he knows the people. He just said the stuff that they're saying he did on a paper. I didn't do it. Nothing past that. I'm innocent. He's, Wake uh, up. You can't really talk about anything else because he's not allowed to talk about his defense at all. That's my point. When he, you asked him this or when you've had these conversations, he's been locked up. He's been on right. recorded, he's been on right. recorded calls, right? right. So it, that means he's going to say he didn't do it even if he did it. No, he could just say, I, I, I can't talk about my case. He didn't have to say all that. He could have just said, he told me I'm not going to jail for something I didn't do. I didn't do it. He don't know you and, and you don't know him. And he knows he can tell you that. And hoping you'll believe it. You sound like the rest when they say you don't know him, but they believe the people they don't know. Don't nobody know nobody in this situation. So y'all don't know the people that's making the claim. Just like I don't y'all say, I don't know the person that's being accused. But here's so don't nobody know nobody at this point. But there's I know him a, a little bit better than everybody knows anybody. There's, so. a difference. there's a difference. The difference is he's one person where all of these people are saying all this negative shit about him. All of these people are accusing him of doing something wrong to them. But it's just one of each of these people making these. I mean, they don't really know each other that we there's no uh, uh, proof that they know each other. The detective said in court, the two ladies know each other. OK. And, and even if they do, it's still multiple people saying something about a dude that you don't know at all, who was not honest with you. So I'm only, like I said, I'm only going off of what I see and what I hear in court and what I see on the, on the warrants and how the warrants don't make sense. So 
you know, again, like I always tell people, let the evidence show what it is. If the evidence show he wrong and they right, then that's what it is. That's the only thing we can wait for is the evidence because they can y'all can harp and say, well, you don't know him. Y'all don't know none of these people. None of these people. And, and like I said, the, the source of where everything is coming from is the biggest question of all. I can tell a I can tell a story to somebody and leave out something and it can be a crime. But if I told you the whole story, it cannot be a crime. So we don't know the whole don't story. Know the whole story either. We That's don't know true. the whole story. We only know what the one girl said or the other girl said or the other girl said. So we don't know the whole story. We don't know, you know, well, like I said, they didn't bring all of these women are saying it about this one man. And and here's the other thing, Sonia, that I really want to get an understanding for. You know, you and I talked a little bit yesterday, right? And wow. um, <laughs> I know we, we talked for a long time. Wow. And wh while we were talking, um, you mentioned that you know you're you're his only boots on the ground for the most part. You're the mm -hmm. only person kind of out here fighting for him. But Nesto has a wife. Nesto has. Does he have siblings? Six kids, two sisters. He's got so there's eight. So he has seven siblings in is that what you're saying or or six kids two sisters oh two sisters and six kids oh he has six kids okay so he's got two sisters he's got six children and you're the person that's the boots on the ground and you just met him they know this nigga they again again everybody again so again so my thing with that was in the beginning when um everybody was talking before everything got on youtube um thank you a second Emil. They said, they said he didn't do it. So this is the family saying it. I know he didn't do that. I know he didn't do that. That's not him. My father would never do that. And this is more on the serious charges. Um, the stuff with the girls, again, like I said, I feel like it's civil because it was a dating situation. I don't know what he gave them. You know, they could say, because I know females, when you when 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 they involve with somebody and, and they don't go the way they want it to go, they get to turning and saying only things that make them look good and the other person look bad and they omit certain things. That's a pattern with females. They love to say, Well, you did it, and what what have what did you do? Nothing. You know, they omit certain things. So again, you're talking about women who are feeling some type of way. And again, certain, all these things happened in 21. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other stuff at the other girl happened in 22. So if the girl felt in 21, the stuff that transpired between him and her, mm -hmm. she didn't go to the police. The police went to her in okay. 22. So apparently she didn't feel like it was a crime whatever that transpired between them because she didn't go to the police. She didn't call the police and say, this dude just ran off with this, that, and the other. And he said this, and this is what happened. The police went after they got and did everything that they did. They went snooping and on through his phone, Ooh, me, oh, reading stuff. Let me call this girl and see what, how that's going and what's going on with that. And then a charge comes up. The okay. thing with the other girl, she reported her car, but she didn't report anything else. Cause all that okay. stuff with the Zales and the credit cards happened before the car. She didn't report anything to South Fulton, but the car. Okay. So like because I said, car, think about it this way. If, if I gave you cash for different things, that's one thing, but now you got my freaking vehicle and I got to get around. Not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying, if you felt that everything that you did was an issue when you went to report the car, how come you didn't report all those other things? Okay. I'll give that's you that. That's what I'm but, saying. But, but that's what I'm saying. So situation. it's just a I lot of questioning. Explain, Sonia, mm -hmm. I know you can't explain what he, what his side is because you haven't really heard it. I but, can't. All right. I don't know it. I don't but know. What it. I hear you doing is dismantling anything that the victims are saying. You're I'm just putting. That I'm just putting. I'm just putting real life and common sense with it. And hold the on, thing of it is, on, when on, we went to my, court, my statement out. Hold on. Hold on. You are dismantling everything these victims have said. But you're not dismantling the fact that he said, I ain't do it. Yeah, I've been to prison. Yeah, I, and look, I don't judge people who have something in their background. You and I talked about it. I, I have something in my background. I, I got a lot of stuff in my background. The, I work with people all the time that has something in their background. I believe in second chances, but 
but he but that past still lived there and if he didn't have anything else in between that that's great he didn't have he doesn't any have any convictions. any convictions in between doesn't have think, any and, and but doesn't mean he wasn't committing crimes but nevertheless we don't i don't have to assume we do know that the crimes that he is being accused of right now they're pretty heinous couple of them. and so you that's all right and those are the ones i focus on and just like i said with the um with the r charge um he didn't even know her at the time so that that dismantles that warrant wait again you were taking his word for that uh not not his word i i actually got it from a family member first he didn't say anything because he really wasn't thinking and then i brought it to him and he was like huh i said when did you meet her did you meet her before or after your son was shot he said afterwards because the son was the one who told me that's who told me when they met he didn't tell me but how he told me he said he didn't meet because i remember when that girl how he told me how they went and how it went about this down the other and he was telling him the story and he said i knew when it happened it was after i got shot and i was like well, when did that happen he said july i said well the warrant says january and then i looked at the lease and everything and i was like well when did they move well, they didn't move from california until december december 19th 2019 is the lease they were still living in california now he was back and forth here and there but they didn't sign the lease and move back to atlanta till december 2019. So all that stuff she was saying, she was acting like his stuff was there. His stuff wasn't back in town yet. His stuff didn't come in town till after that. So they got the dates wrong, really wrong. And, and the thing about that is everybody knows COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows what happened in 2020 because COVID. Oh, I remember that because that, yeah, because that happened right there in COVID. So to say, okay, well, maybe it didn't happen in 19, maybe it happened in 20. Everybody know what happened in COVID, the year of COVID, everybody knows. So it's just a lot of, if you say it's the truth, then there wouldn't be no issues with what was what the paperwork is saying and what other things are saying. It would be this, this, that, and it had to be that. So right now they're getting two things, which is, you know, well, me and this investigator are getting two things, which will prove exactly what's what I'm saying. So, okay. Let's and, and, thank you. Thank you again for your um, super chat. It says poor people needing hope are the easiest targets. Yeah, that's those are the people that get. Think about in churches. Let's just take some of these churches where the pastors are are, you know, taking all the money from the parishioners, and they're living the life, but the parishioners are struggling. That's typically what well, happens. Talking about thirty people that are, you know, you got two women that are saying something. But the other, the first woman didn't give him anything. It was transferred to a, a dealership. That's not him. And then the money orders was, and this is from court, and the money orders was transferred to three people and him not being neither one of them. Okay. Only thing that he ever got was the stuff from the girl that he was dating. Um, that's the only person that, got, that gave him stuff. Well, the, Calvin, they got proof that he gave him some stuff too in, in 2000 and. I don't even know what year that was. Might have been 19 or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, but. Well, let, let me ask you this. So, and this um, brings up a, a good point that I'm looking at this question. It says, ask her how she feel about Dre. So have you talked to Dre on the phone? I only talked to Dre when he asked me to. Okay. And you're in contact though, working for Ernesto, you're, you you have contact with Dre and with his son. Um, I only talk to them if he tells me to. Other than that, I do not talk to them. And then there's there's Lamont. no need for me to talk to them. Okay. Okay. Well, no, I'm just asking who you have. Yeah. There's no need for me to talk to them unless he asks me. Okay. Other than that, no. But my question is, the people that you do have contact with are people like Dre, his son Dion, his brother, who we who is not really his brother, Lamont, right? His friend. Is there anybody? And you said his daughters. Two of the daughters? I spoke to two of his daughters. Two of the daughters. Okay. And none, well, the but daughters. Only one since this happened. One I spoke to before this happened, but one since this happened. How do they talk to you? Do, do they ever bring up his wife or anything like that? 
We don't talk like we don't talk like that. It's it's it's, it's always talking for the father. It's not talking like, hey girl, what you doing? This sign is such such. That's not the conversation. I'm only talking on behalf to get whatever message he want me to say to his people. Okay. So I'm not trying to insert myself in his life like that. You get me? No, I can't tell. I'm only dealing, no, I'm only dealing to with him me. and his no. cases. I'm not trying to insert myself with friends and family and all of that type of stuff. So if Sorry. he asks me to call somebody, I will. If they call me and ask me how he's doing or tell me tell him to call me, then I do that. Other than that, I'm just the, the go-between sometimes. Mm -hmm. But other than that, that's it. I'm not trying to like, oh, let's have lunch and let's go here. And that. I'm not trying to do all of that. So um, are you on good terms with everybody that we just spoke of? Are you on good terms with Dre? I don't, I haven't, me and him have not exchanged bad words or, or you know, all that type of stuff. Okay. What about um, the son? Am I, no, I don't talk to his son. Okay. Um, I got to ask you, since we're bringing up the son, you know, can't talk about the kids because he don't want to be spoke on. So we ain't going to talk about his son because his son don't want to be spoke on. So okay, he can't well, speak on his son. son. But I'm going to talk about you. You brought you was about the comment I made on the jail call about the son. Yeah. <laughs> it was nothing compared to what transpired before that on, on, on the other end. So let's say that that was way lighter than what I got. And that was after what I got. So that's why that happened. Okay, and so he knew he knew what happened. He knew what happened. So yeah, it was some words. So, mm -hmm. and I was, I was very polite on my end compared to what I got before that. So we'll just say that. So. Okay. Now this is kind of related to. Um, Ask her is she only cordial with male friends, wife? Would she have went to dinner with Shirley knowing she slept with the husband? Um, cool. So here's this, right? So here's this because I this this happened in my in my family's situation because my dad was doing some things and he kept bringing this chick around that he was dating around his main and I was like and and I was like feeling some type of like like you're not supposed to bring her around her that's disrespectful and it, she trying to act all buddy buddy but it was ongoing it was ongoing you know both situations now because I was done. And um, what I sit down, I probably would never go around her because my friendship with him was at a distance and it was going to be at a distance where I made sure I really never saw him. So it was no need for me to sit down and, you know, do a dinner with because I'm not his, you know, in person friend. I'm not. Let's go hang out friend. So because we were just on the phone and I was in one city and he was in a whole nother city. And we basically only talked about RVs, RV parks, remodeling ambulances, buying ambulances. Like those were our conversations. We didn't have, you know, boo conversations. But Sonia, didn't you uproot your life from Florida to come back to Georgia? To no, I didn't, up, I didn't uproot my life. My lease was up and I was going to go somewhere. I was kind of had one foot in Vegas and then I had another foot somewhere else because I like to move. Um, but because, um, this situation was going like it was going and he wasn't getting no type of support from his camp. Um, he, he wanted me to come here just to help out with his cases. Have you and ever I, asked yourself why he can't get support from his camp? There's a lot of people in jail that, that don't get support. Not saying they're guilty. They just question. don't get camp. I ain't talking about them other people. I'm talking about him. He just yeah. said they're not built like that. And, Wait, and it is a lot. He, he told me they're not built like that. Like I said, they all said that he didn't do it and they felt he was innocent. They didn't say he was guilty and F him and I ain't got time for that. Son, they just hmm. I ain't talking about what he told you. I'm asking. No, you. I'm talking about what I heard from okay, them. No, I'm not no, talking no. about what he said. No, don't worry about what you heard. Just think of it from this standpoint. You don't know him that well. Y'all are supposed to be just friends at a distance. He's not your hang. You just said out your own mouth. He's not your hangout buddy. He's not your in-person friend, but he's in jail. And you moved to Atlanta. You Whether you were going to go somewhere else, you 
this was a large reason why you came to Atlanta. This was a large reason, him. right? Did you ever think to yourself, this dude who who seems to be business minded because he had a you know he he had the keys to the place you wanted to lease or buy. Uh, he he's talked about his businesses. I'm sure he showed off some of his stuff. And you knew he was married. You know he's got kids and he's got friends and family. How could how, how how why would it be your obligation to move to this city to be his advocate? When all these other people who know him better, known him longer, they again, don't. Again, I know person. how this play. I know how this works because I worked in criminal law, and we have plenty, plenty of people that didn't do it. They had no family support, but had family. You know, it's a lot of people that be in your face, and when you need them for like, oh, I need a ride. Can you bring me here? Or I need a place to stay for a month. They be like, Shh, I can't do it. You know, but they're your friend, but they're your sister, but they're your brother. And and it's something they could do, you know, and it's no fault of yours. You're in that situation and they still don't look out. So it's sometimes it's not always about the fact that, um, you know, oh, it seems like he should could have did it because nobody in his family want to help. No, it's just some people. I think the biggest issue, and I told him this, the biggest issue I feel is when they talk to him on the phone and they hear it on the phone conversations. Um, he doesn't come off distraught, you know, uh, sad, um, you know, in need and all that other stuff. So in their mind, they think, oh, he good. He good. You know what I'm saying? He got this, this, that, and the other. When in actuality, he's not. He's not good. He's, 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 you know, he's, he's very deeply depressed, terrified and all of that. But a lot of the times, most of the times he don't display that to them. He don't show weakness because he was always to strengthen the family. So in his mind, he don't want to get on the phone and show weakness to them. And so in their mind, they thinking he good. He don't, you know, he all right for whatever I've, I've been doing or not doing. He good because he's not sounding any type of way on the phone. They're not thinking this he's is hard. They know what he, they got to know jail ain't easy. No, trust well, me. If y'all pay attention to the phone calls that him and Lamont and all we of them are. had. And, and, and how like they be talking to him. Oh man, you good. Ain't nothing else going, ain't nothing going on out here. Like what? Okay, so I'm good in jail because ain't nothing going on out there. Like that doesn't even make sense to say that. Who wants to There's be in Sonya, jail? Sonya, think about what you're saying right now. I'm thinking. I know what I'm saying because I, I I've been there, done that. I've wait, been there. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Here's the thing. You've got all of these excuses as to why he is probably not guilty. Why nobody wants to support him. Why he didn't tell you he was married why you thought he was faithful all of these things and then he's got all of these charges now on top of it and you and you're going based upon what you want to believe about this man but not really what you know because you don't know him and he's not going to tell you anything different than what you're saying he's not going to say it if let's say for instance let's say he is for just argument sake let's say he's a, i mean a, i'll be honest i think he is a career criminal that's my thought of it. Now, mm -hmm. if he is a career criminal, don't you think part of that comes with lying and being a charmer and being slick? Of course. He slid your panties off the next day he saw you. And, and before you even got to ask him if he was married. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, anything's possible. And, I'm, and like I said, um, I feel like if he's lying, it's a waste of my time. You know, if he's lying about anything or if he actually did it. Mm -hmm. But right now, um, looking at everything, it just doesn't look like what they're saying is true. That's all. Now, let me ask and you. And it's this. not, and again, it's not just me because I don't, when you're emotionally involved with people, you tend to be naive or one side or want to believe the person and all that type of exactly. stuff. So I have, like I said, spoke to other people in law enforcement and in, you know, the legal side of this. And just to say, OK, am I just dreaming? Am I just believing what he want me to believe because he's, you know, da, 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 da. And I know, you know, people say things to keep people around. And like I said, they said no. Just something with this, and that's not right. My attorney even said it like, "What the fuck is he in jail for? What? What?" And I was like, "Man, like this is crazy." Like, and I, 
I don't even understand. He was like, that's not probable cause. That's not a reason to search. And this done it. Like it was just so much stuff with the case that I was talking to other people who would know who do criminal law. Like I said, I talked to prosecutors, police, lawyers, you know, mm -hmm. tell me if I'm crazy. Tell me, if, you know, if I'm just thinking this because, you know, I'm his friend, we cool. And I, you always want to think the best or believe people. And they all said the same thing. So no one told me anything different or try to say, oh, no, 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 no. The only thing that one person said was they just got to prove criminal intent. He said, no, it don't sound that don't even sound like a crime. But then again, he said, that's just a half story. But even if you said that was true and that's how that transpired, he was like, it doesn't mean it's criminal. They got to prove the criminal intent, the situation. OK, Let I don't think you. I don't okay. think a person's going to waste 10 months of their time talking to one person if it was all about a money grab because the money that he made. He could have got a regular job working at McDonald's and, and made the same money. That's how much money he got in 10 months. He could have had a regular job and, and made that same money. So I don't see how that would make sense. If I know I'm scamming wait. to risk my freedom for money, I could have went and got wait, a wait, job. Wait. And did. You're saying Nesto only made the amount. No. That it, oh, this is somebody else. I'm saying the money that, that they're saying that, that they were trying to say, oh, it was a scam. I'm like, man, if it took me 10 months to get eight or six thousand dollars i could have went and worked a job why would i just be around somebody fake like i like them sleep with them get them a car take they some places do all of this stuff when i could have just had a regular job if this was a scam because why would i do all that want a regular job he doesn't he's he probably ain't had i'm just saying he, he could have did that. he could have did anything to make that money than have to do all of that if it was a scam that's what i'm saying i don't Again, that's just my but, opinion. But, I, I could be wrong. He, what, his I could be wrong. Everybody business. want me to be wrong, and that's fine. Everybody got an opinion. But they wait, don't know any. Listen. They don't know any of the players. But but what they're saying is true, but and you it's don't weird. Even know the main player. That's I the know the main player more than y'all know all the players. No, I don't know, girl. Because because y'all don't know him, and y'all don't know them. So but and like I said, and his kids and his friends, they all know. Him. Right. And, and they ain't there. You are. Mm -hmm. Well, you if you listen to the 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 reasoning on why uh I ain't gonna say because I don't want to talk about them. But anyway, um so whatever. I mean, I well, say we when we go to court, it, it'll show in court, and that's what I say. If it right. shows that he did that stuff and, and you know they got feel? that's one of my Questions coming up. How are you going to feel? If and I'm like, then he's going to deserve to go to jail. And that's just what it is. You got to suck it up and, and go, man up and take it. And you wasting my time with the lies, but I get it because you don't even want to go through the crap lesson? alone. Huh? What would be what will be your lesson in? Like how would how you do I feel about the visual you... cause? They cool. What huh? you say? No, that I'm girl asking... asks, how do I feel about the visual cause? I'm like, they yeah, cool. Yeah, that's the question I'm about to get to in a second. But yeah, they let, cool. me, let me ask you this. I, hell, you done made me lose my train of thought. Uh -huh. You know, we all. No, I, I know you can't be uh, uh, messing me up. Supposed to have your notes. I, no, I was saying it. I didn't do this, that. This is the thing with people. A lot of people, when somebody when they see somebody get accused, they automatically say, "Oh, they did it," and no. then their mind just sticks to that. Mm -hmm. And then when they throw out a pass, oh, he really did it because he got a pass. I got a pass, and I've been accused and 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 took a plea on some shit that I didn't even do. I didn't even do, but they, but they, you know, just that and the other and all this other stuff. So I know a lot of things from going through a lot of things. And I know that as bad as I was in my twenties, I would never do those things again. You know, but period. My question for you right now is, and I just remembered, if you are to find out that he was, he's guilty or you mm -hmm. see the evidence in your face, what will be the lesson for you? Will be the lesson. Yeah, I, I, I mean, mm -hmm. one thing I I feel like right now because I'm not doing anything, um, and I'm not really consumed with this as people are. I think people are way more consumed than I am because again, I don't think about this situation unless I have to talk about it, which isn't even every day. Crap, let's go. Um, ten o'clock. Crap. Almost. Yeah, I won't keep you much longer. Real quick. 
Because I did want to ask you specifically. He's on. Know. He's not gonna be able to talk on this phone because it's on. The, it's on the same thing. No, that you, can, you can. Um, you can put him on speaker. Just put him closer. Is that him calling? That was him. I'm just. Um, I should have Y'all, talk to her nurse, though. I, I'm gonna ask about the jail calls. Thank you, a pimp. Thank you. And actually, you guys, I yeah, I want to ask you, how did you feel when you left? First of all, forget the the voice, the the um the video calls. How did you feel initially when the phone calls showed up on the internet? What now? When mm -hmm. the phone? Oh. Is that him? What happened? No, I said, how did you feel when? when you noticed that those phone calls were on the internet? Oh, when they hit the internet? So yeah. half the stuff that we talk about, I forget as soon as we talk about it, cause I ain't got no memory. And a lot of that is just, just keep up, just keep them like occupied mentally cause he just sitting there and he'd be like trying to find something to talk about. You'd be sitting there like, uh, you know, cause we never really talked long on the phone. It was always, what's your day like? How's this? All right, click. That was it. It was never no long conversation. So once he went to jail, you sitting there like, okay, now you got to talk about something, you know? So I only seen him a handful of times. Ain't too much to talk about because, you know, what else are you going to talk about? We never had the type of situation where, oh, this, you know, it's just, it was just a breakfast call type scenario, right? Mm -hmm. So when, um, when they got out, I didn't think much of it because I didn't think, you know, we don't talk about nothing. So I wasn't thinking, you know, I still don't really think it's too much of it other than the, 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 the encounter conversation. I don't think much of the conversations, you know, mm -hmm. um, I don't know why he don't know why. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Thank you everybody in the chat. Hi everyone. Thank you for supporting. Please be kind. I don't know, just like he don't know why people are so like, why is it so interesting? Because again, it's not like, you know, most 99% of the time that we talk, it's like boys. Like we don't be on there, boo boo and miss you. And I can't wait to hold you. It's not a, that type of conversation. You know, it's just how's core, what's going on and whatever's happening in my life, which ain't too much. Cause I don't do too much of anything. Um, nothing's going on in his life cause he's in jail. So it's basically current events and whatever you can kind of like so try you to scurry and out. talk. You weren't freaked out. You weren't nervous. You weren't upset or mad when you learned that they were out on the internet. That's what you're saying. So it is upsetting to have them out there, but if they listen to them and let it go, that would have been cool. It's the fact that you keep hearing people just ride it and just keep wanting to know. And any reason they're like, why are you asking me something? when you don't even know me regardless of the fact it's one thing when if i it's one thing if i was the one that came out and brought you know the situation now so i brought it out so now it's like well you put yourself out there and it's like no i didn't i had to eventually say something because the bloggers kept dragging and dragging and calling me all kind of hoes just and kept trying to interpret conversations to say it oh this is what they're talking about oh this is who she's talking about and i'm saying like no that's not and no that's not who i'm talking about and it just kept with this whole narrative and then so we were like okay so if the calls die down as far as the views then it's gonna just fade away but we kept i kept watching the numbers and the numbers and the numbers and i was like man this ain't going nowhere he was like what i'm like man thirty thousand forty thousand views like the hell i was like why are these people still listening to this stuff it's like not exciting no one i knows listens to the calls or even know about the inner um the stuff on the, the internet my daughter nobody mm -hmm. they know but they don't pay attention they don't open it up they've never looked at anything these are all people i do not know that watch this stuff no one else watches this stuff i don't even watch it unless somebody calls and tells me you know to watch it because i'm trying to figure out what like it, it's just two people talking on the phone you, okay so what okay. he's still here you know well, people who's married okay so 50 percent of all relate of all marriage is somebody's cheating y'all act like that just never occurs so that's not even something to make it no, 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 no. let's not dismiss it like we no one thinks it occurs. but it's we not a it big it's not, that's why we it's like, not we a big issue. Wait, 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 Sonya. we know it occurs which is why in our 50s we should 
we should wonder if these men are married when we meet them. And then when we find out if you they're married. Have that problem going. That's why that, that could be why I didn't think nothing of it because in all my life of dating, I never ran across the situation. I never, a married man never stepped to me that I knew eventually was married and said yeah. anything to me. So a married man could have, but he probably never got anywhere with me for me to find out eventually he was married. So I've never had that for me to try to think about it. And nor has anybody that I've talked to that, I mean, you know, the girls that I deal with um, ever had that. So maybe it was lack of thinking about it because I never went through it. But now I do because been there, done that. So it's like now I, I purposely go and I make sure, look, hey, are you like, when was, when was your last girlfriend in? You know, because this one guy was talking to me online and he was all like, what's up? I want to see you. And I go on his page and, and, Two months ago, he was putting a ring on somebody talking about I love her and my mama love her and all this, that, and the other. And I'm like, why does he keep trying to come and see me? And he just put a ring on somebody's finger two months ago. So I'm like, I'm screenshot and I sent it to him. Dude called me like, oh, you want some childish shit, this, that. And I'm like, why am I? Why, why are you giving it to me? I just want to understand. You said you single, but here you are two months ago putting a ring on somebody's finger, talking about my mama love her and she's everything to me. And, da -da 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 -da. and I'm trying to figure out. What's going on? You trying to come at me like I'm wrong? I'm like, look, or oh, whatever, you know. And so it's like, point. and that would hmm? be my point. That would be yeah. My point. So again, I didn't like think that. about stuff like that because I didn't experience it, but I did experience it just with this situation. So now I'm like, dude, like, you know, I question it. Okay. I okay, question. So back to my original question. So you weren't feeling any way about those those video. I mean, the phone calls because you knew they were recorded and even though yeah. you didn't know they would be on the internet uh you, you didn't trip so much you guys were careful about what you talked about however when you got to the video calls did that surprise it's you? the same it's the same conversation but you i'm gonna tell you on the first or second video call one of the things you said was look we can't talk on the phone so let's talk here because I don't think you thought that those calls were going to be. Yeah, because it was right. Because it was it was because the only thing that that was a difference was YouTube. That was the only difference. That's why. Because the prosecutors are all the calls. The prosecutors are all the text messages. Well, we know that. Yeah. So the only difference was on that. The jail calls was certain things he was like he did he couldn't say because he had a meeting with the lawyer and he was like I can't talk to you on the phone about it. You got to come here and I'll talk to you about it because he didn't want it all over YouTube. Right. But it was again, the prosecutor's always on the phone. So it's not like it's that big of a deal. It's just certain things you don't want. Right. And you guys you don't all want on in the YouTube. But again, it still wasn't no intimacy type of conversation. It was just a conversation that he just didn't want all over like YouTube. That's the thing. You don't want it all over, but at the same time, um it's it's because I know it's it's not, you know, I don't feel like the conversations are all that deep and this, down the other, where people run the way they run with it. Um, and the way they just keep, um, every time something plays, a bargain want to go and do a whole tutorial on a phone call between two people they don't even freaking know. And and it's just, it, that part is just what's crazy. It's one thing that they play them. Okay, you listen to it, it's whatever. But when they try to go, let's break it down and let's, and see, she's talking about such and such and she's, and then they put the headline and the, and nothing matches. And I'll be like, what? I had never talked to that person in my world. And I'll go play it. And I'm like, no, they didn't sit there and try to make it seem like I'm talking to such and such when I'm not. And I'm talking about somebody else. But apparently it's only one person that I could know that does this. And it's just crazy to me. But then, it's being messy because I see, which I didn't know before I got caught up in the in the YouTube streets, that they say these things. Because I used to watch the stories on YouTube and I used to sit there and believe that stuff like, wow, for real? Oh, uh -uh, that's messed up. You know, until it happened to me and I was like watching it and just listening to it like, that's a lot. That's a lot. These people be lying for real. Like, because well, he used to tell me. Tell me this. Tell me this. With that said, Tell me three lies that they've said about you that you've heard out in the internet. Oh my God, you want me to remember? Or at least a, a phone call. A phone call, me and him was talking about somebody else. He said it was me and him talking about his wife, that his wife was calling me and me and her was on the phone. That was, I was like, what? Well, never talked to her ever. I was talking about somebody else that was in radio and it wasn't her because I know people in radio. Um, and uh, when that girl was telling all that stuff about me when she was trying to break my life down and, and this is this and, and 
um, you know, my daughter dances, I dances. Uh, what else did she say? That was a lot. She said some other stuff. I can't remember all of that. But that, that mistake is an easy one because you worked in a strip club. So they probably just assumed if you're in the strip club, you, you're a stripper. She knew. She was saying it to be a dick because she was saying I was up on the pole with dudes filling and fingering me and stuff. She was saying it to be to be just to be nasty. And she kept harping on it. And I was like, and you hear me when I'm talking, you know, I've never worked in a strip club. You can't find no pictures of me in those strip club outfit to even run with that. So when I'm talking about strip clubs, anytime I ever talk about it, I talk it from a manager's point of view. I don't never talk about, yeah, because my client, my customers used to come in. I never said that. So that's the only thing that dancers, entertainers say is my customers. When my customers come in and see me, that's dancer conversation. I've never said that. You know, I've only talked about uh working in the aspects of an owner or when i used to manage so it's not an easy thing to say type of scenario and i was almost 40 when i started working in strip clubs so who is 40 starting to strip i know strippers that's been stripping and stripping till they 40. Yeah, but they weren't looking at your how your length of employment probably or the years there i don't know what they were looking at but they obviously knew you were she wasn't that. looking at anything but to be messy because the same time she said that she called me a hoe so she again was being messy deliberately. Well, being messy because you want a married man. It don't matter. If the, it, it ain't. It ain't their business. It ain't the way they was trying to insert themselves. They're acting like it, it's are they me and inserting them. themselves, Sonia. Or are they just giving commentary on your life because you're involved with a person who's connected to a public person who's it's connected one way to it's a one thing to report person. it's one thing to just report it and just leave it like whatever it is like you know they they um from what we hear on the phone calls you know it seems like they had an intimate moment or two you know but listening to the phone calls today you after told that, him, in the video call um, today you told him you are that he's yours he's your man yeah i didn't listen to that i didn't listen to that but i did but did you listen to it or did you just read the hat the heading because on the other one when it says science says she's you too famous and i'm like when did i say that and so i i you actually watched it, it. I did say it, but they, they put it on the heading like that's all I talked about. You get me? So when they put it on the head and you're thinking that's all I'm talking about is your mind, your mind. And da, 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 da. so I didn't listen to that video. We gotta draw the people in, girl. We gotta draw but in. still, don't be messy. And that's the problem I got now with, with phone calls from prison is now they jumped on the messy wagon. It was one thing when they was just saying, Sonia talks about da 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 And that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Tell it like it is. But when you're trying to put all that, they don't have to because they getting they getting the traffic anyway. They no, don't they even have, have to. Be they want more traffic, girl. This is a business, and it ain't our fault that Nesto. It's a business, real. but it ain't reality TV. It is. It's better. It's not. It's not something we signed up for. And when you sign up for reality TV, you sign up for people to be in your business and judge you and talk about you. It's part of it. You get a check for it. This is something that we didn't sign up for. This is something that we was dragged out about and then they want to drag it and drag it and drag it and drag it and make him look a certain way make me look a certain way they was coming for the the, the wife for like eight nine months they was coming for her you know what i'm saying it was just it was just them trying to just be overly messy and nasty with no consideration that these are real people going through stuff and it you know regardless of if somebody feel like he did it or not, you still got to just wait and see what 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 the outcome is. You can't sit there and prejudge a situation that has no evidence. All it has is is a couple of comments, and then he can't say anything to to try to you know dispute the comments. He can't say anything right now. So all it is is some comments that right. when we go to court that has no supporting evidence. So like I said, we went to court and they had supporting evidence of anything to say. Okay, that's true. Or he did that fine no problem but every time we go to court i'm like why are they charging him what that don't even make sense and it's crazy because they sat there and they said all this stuff and they was like well his name's not on any of it i'm like then why are you charging him oh well, that happened in kentucky then why are you charging him and it and it wasn't even sent to him it was sent to this company and not him and what happened after we don't know what happened we just know they went up there and this is what transpired yeah but we're that's that's not a crime what happened after that we don't know. We didn't do any investigation after that. It's not a crime to go out of town and to a dealership and somebody wire money. That part's not a crime. Where's the crime? Okay, they didn't so say. They couldn't say. 
we need to take a quick break, quick break. I just want to um, ask you a couple more questions about one, how long will you be in this? In, you can think about it. How long is going to be long enough before you say, okay, I, I've done all I can do. Okay. So think about that. And um, while you're thinking about that, I just want to thank the folks who are, are giving um, some super chats. They have comments to make, you know, um, is it a lady, a lady 747 says cons run several cons at once. And she knows it. That's what, and, and look, I, I know it. I Anderson know that they will still proven guilty. Whatever that happened to that. Say that one more time. Innocent until proven guilty. Innocent until proven guilty. I, I, I do believe in innocent until proven guilty, but I also I can't believe, tell. I no no no. I no. also believe I that tell. there's too many. This look. That's fine. Too many, can look, wait wait wait, Sonya. Hold on. Just because I don't, I'm not going to buy in completely that this man is innocent doesn't mean I think everybody who is charged with a crime is absolutely guilty. We know that that's not the case. But at the same time, this is a man, I just don't understand why a man who isn't rich himself, he's not like highly educated, he's not like highly uh, powerful, he's not, he's not a, a, a huge community activist or a politician. He's, he's, why pick on Nesto? Why would all of these different entities, all of these people and the justice system point him out? Not, I, I mean, and, and of course, yes, his connection to Steve Harvey by way of his wife. Sure. That's how we found out about it. And that's why we even care. But the truth is they ain't going after none of them people that's around them, they're going after him. So at what point do you say to yourself, okay, I've done all I can do? Or what if they delay his tr a trial for another couple of years? How long are you willing to wait to make this choice? That's that's my question. So with that said, while you're thinking on that, let me say a couple things to folks with the that are giving Super Chats. Thank you, the Tea Lounge. Um, tea Lounge, ask how well this is kind of similar to my other question it says when did when did she need to be dues personal oh, okay so when did you start sort of stepping in to help him as his advocate thank you t lounge but wait hold on you can answer that when we come back we're gonna take a real super quick break we'll be back in 30 seconds y'all if you would like to donate to the channel you may do so obviously through super chat but also paypal and cash app and you can check me out right here Okay, so back to the question at hand. How long do you think you will um, you will ride with a oh boy? Um, as long as it takes, apparently. So let's say he gets convicted. Will you stay in Atlanta and or wherever? Oh he no, I'm not staying in Atlanta. Mm -mm. Okay. No. No, no, no. Are you willing to wait to make moves until after he, the determination has been made around his case? Cases? No, because I feel like the stuff that I can do, I don't have to really be in town to do it. Okay. okay. I can do it from anywhere, actually. I don't necessarily have to be here for all of that. The, the the main thing was um, 
checking up on the attorneys and making sure they were doing what they were doing and doing whatever investigative work that I could do on my end for him that, that I know they are not doing because it's a lot of things that the attorneys aren't doing that what they if, can't do. What if he gets convicted? God forbid. What if he gets convicted and then he's going to go and, and um, appeal? Would you stay or you know still stand by him through the appeal and all of that? Um, so if, if the evidence shows he did it, um, and I only really focus on the serious charges, um, the other stuff at this point, um, I don't really focus on those. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm just really focused on the more serious two cases that he has that can really put time on him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, the, the, the first one, um, I don't really concern myself with that one because like I said, he didn't even know her at the time. So, um, and me and attorney was talking on that. And again, we got to wait in order to, for two things to come up to even show actually, you know, which are going to be the phone records, which is going to prove when they started talking, you know, the phone records are going to show that phone records are going to ping where he was at the time, you know, that they said that that happened. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the other one, um, once the IP, the IT guy goes through, like I said, we were looking at other warrants and how they were read, how they were specifically detailed and how this one was so general. And they were saying that the dates was the dates he was incarcerated instead of the actual dates that the downloads would show on the computer. So again, that's that's a huge red flag too because we were looking at other warrants from the same county and how they were specifying with these other cases and this, that, and the other. But on his, they got the dates he was in jail instead of the dates that the computer would show and then other things about it. So those two are like more so the ones that I focus on more than anything because the other ones, he had been in jail 18 months um, on that. Um, and like I said, when, when I was talking to the attorney about it, it's basically a he say, she say, and they got to bring out, they can bring out the text message to kind of show the nature of the conversation to see if anybody could prove, which they didn't in court, to say that this is why this happened or this was the uh, intention when this person did this and he didn't come through. You can see it in the conversations. Um, they didn't show any of that in court. They just left it at a statement. That's it. She didn't even bring the recorded statement in. And then she said, tried to say, well, I don't know because I wasn't the officer that interviewed her. And I'm like, so you come in here with no recording. You're not the officer. You brought no documentation. You're just sitting here quoting something out the air. And that was crazy to me. I'm like, what? So it's just a lot of stuff. And again, dealing with the police department that, that's handling this, why? Why are they on everything when only one thing happened in Roswell? Everything else happened all over the place, but no other police department is on it, nor is the county. So it's out of jurisdiction. Like I, like the two attorneys said prior to the two they have now, something that's right not right with this case is it's like it's a political. They feel like it's a political driven situation. But that's my point. How is it possible that this is political? Like who who is Nesto? I mean, okay, so, you know what I mean? Like, how? who is he? It would be like if, if a bunch of folks start doing that shit he, to me. Like, he, I, is, he, is, he is what you call an easy mark because he has a criminal past. And if I'm, if, I'm, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm looking for an easy mark because you do have police officers that arrest people for career advancement. You do have officers that do things unlawful, you know, just because they got a quota to meet. Um, but, but this requires so many people, Sonia, to be involved. Like you got big again, like I said, you got, um, you got you got you got them saying one thing, and he's saying he doesn't even think the ladies even said it. Like they said it, he said I, I don't think they said that, and I don't think they said it the way they're saying it. He thinks the conversation they had was twisted and turned into a crime. That's what he thinks. So, so I mean. 
like I said, everything right now is just speculation because there's no solid proof that was showed up in court or anything that they're saying. Yes. And this is all just, again, my perspective, not his, because he can't talk. You know, only thing he could say that's is... That's the thing, Sonia. So let me ask you this. What if he, just for argument's sake, let's say he did it. What do you expect him to say while he's in jail to you about these things? If he If he knows he did it, and he, uh -huh. and he knows they can prove he did it. Uh huh. Um, I never asked him, "Did you do it?" For him to say, "I didn't do it." I thought you said though he said that he didn't do it. He, he did say he didn't do it. I never asked him, "Did you do this?" You get me for him to say, "I didn't do that." You get me. So if he felt that he did it, I don't know. I can't say. All I can say is, um. He says he's never lied to me. And y'all going to say, well, he's a liar because he lied. Girl. Like <laughs> what? Like we all tell lies, but it's certain certain things we won't lie about. And there's certain people we've never lied to. So to say a person, everybody, everybody on the, on the history of, of breathing. I heard, him lie, I heard him lie to you on the call. You know what call I heard him lie to you? What did he say? The call when you were talking to him and you said, when you were reading off the warrant or a charge or something you were reading and you said, um, yeah, you were doing it. I mean, it says you were here on this day with this one and you were over here at this one on this Isn't day. You to be and you said, wait, wait, wait for the audience. You said, oh, this is why I couldn't catch up with you because you you was busy. You was running. You had all this going on. That's what you said. So to me. No, said, I couldn't have never said that. Because oh, I was oh, oh 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 I know in May when I was in town for two weeks, but I didn't I didn't call him. I was in town for two weeks. I saw him exactly. once, That's but I didn't I call him. I didn't call him to come over and he said or come around me. He couldn't do it. I didn't do that, so I don't know. I gotta listen to that. What you're talking about? Because I know when I was in town in May in 22, um. It was never, I, I saw him once, but I didn't see, I didn't try to see him again and he couldn't, but I could have said that. I mean, I, 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 you would know, I don't know. I'm trying to think, why would I say that? Because I know I, I only saw him because, one time. Because that was your man in your mind or y'all was talking. No, whatever, only, time I, like, caught real, only time I caught your... real feelings for him was July and in August I woke up or maybe a week. It was the end of July. And then um, we kind of had a conversation like, about how we were just friends. Let's just leave it at that situation. Oh, we gonna hear that call? Cause, cause today y'all don't call, listen. Y'all don't hear half the calls. I don't know why. But what I'm telling you is the call we heard today, which was in August. We heard you say you mind. You mind? Yes, the girl just sent me that. Cause I got people that send me stuff that they follow the stuff and they'll they'll watch it and send me stuff. So she just sent me that, and then she sent some stuff that these people was talking about. Um, and that was just in August. So that's after that's what I'm saying in July, August. August. Yeah, July, August was 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 in 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 feelings, and I think um because he because that's when he got the the R charges, and it, it was just a lot of it was a lot of over support and sympathy and all. It was just a lot going on in July, August, and then he was feeling some type of way because he stopped speaking up in June, and then this hit in July, and then you know, his go-to wasn't his go-to, you know? So it was just a mess. It was just a mess. But like I said, um, you know, that's Thank my boy. Love. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, oh, I mean. So, so, okay. But I, I heard you say on, well, I didn't hear it yet. Um, Cause I have to watch the one today, but I know the way you were talking on that call that I mentioned, that tells me that's your man. Y'all flirting. That tells me y'all got something, you know. And I just wonder how you he just cut want it. us to be in a relationship for whatever reason. That is my friend. Okay. Okay. That's and um, that is my friend. Okay. Is there and, anything um, that could keep him from not being your friend? Is there something you could find out that would cause you to say, yeah? this was a mistake or he's really not my friend. Like if he actually did the stuff, I'm not I'm talking about that. Um, I'm talking about I, I, the thing of it is, is the, the other stuff 
it don't make sense. So I can't even put that even out there to say if he really did the earth stuff because the simple fact that the dad was involved with the situation with the girl and the dad was nobody to play with and ain't nobody gonna sit there and risk a situation where you got all these other things you doing out here and play with your play with your life like that with somebody's daughter that you dealing with. So that right there, I can't even in like just in common sense think that. And then, like I said, the dates aren't even matching up on that. So it's just like I just really feel like that's just some bullshit. But the, and then the possession thing, like I said, that don't even. So like, let's say if it was any truth to him finessing the females out of women, out of money. Mm -hmm. Um. I would have to hear both sides to kind of get a kind of thing because like I said, it's I I me and him didn't do money. We didn't I didn't ask, I didn't give. We made sure it was none of that. It was no favors, it, it was nothing but strict conversation. It was no, can you come get me and and take me this and bring me this and pay my bills? It was none of that, none of that. So for them to be, you know, with the, with them other situations that he had going on, just reading the warrant. Because mm -hmm. he hasn't spoken on anything, but just reading the warrant, the girl, you know, doing all kind of stuff. Um, it's more to it. I really feel like it's it just seems. But when I say, oh, you're you're, you know, blasting the victims. No, it's just what history when it when you got women. If you if people are really pay attention to criminal law and criminal charges and all these things that men go through with females that getting their feelings and the first thing when they do is they, they run to the police and exaggerate a story or make up a complete story or tell a one-sided story that sounds you know this way when it actually is not when the whole story gets out it just um i just have to wait and see i just really don't feel like and everybody tries to say well he got all these things he had to do one of those things and i've dealt with cases where we had guys kind of similar to this not exact and dude didn't do none of it you know, he just got caught up with a bunch of mess and it just ended up like, see, like, you know, so as bad and as crazy as things can look, sometimes you can get a turnaround that can be like, man, I didn't even see that coming. And so, or it could be the other way around. I just don't see it with it, the way everything is reading and the things that she could have brought in court, she purposely didn't bring that could have actually just nailed it. She didn't bring no text messages. She just brought she just brought up a statement. That was it. She didn't bring any type of supporting evidence to say, see, here's the conversations they're having. You see right here where she's asking for this and he's this. So you can you can see right there that she's saying this and he's responding to this like nothing, nothing. So if, if you write no zero, you know, and then I'm looking at it. I already know from one girl going on the page talking about, I got to tell you about your husband. Why are you going on? Trying to tell the wife on the husband now what you bitter about, you know? You Is mad for being bitter, or someone saying, "Hey, sis, let me give give you a heads up." No, because of what she talked about. Because she ended up talking to me afterwards, and what she talked about it wasn't that. It was on some bitter stuff. Um, this dude is ghosting me. This dude ain't calling. He ain't taking my calls no more. And I knew what it, that's what it was because he was in jail, and she didn't know, and he ain't answering my calls. So now let me go since, oh, you want to play them games? All right, bet. Let me, let me, let me fix this for you. So let me go to the wife and say some things. Let me, a couple of quick questions. Um, one, so Sonia didn't go on Nesto's social media and see his wife all over the social media. So when you guys were talking. After, after he told me he was, after he told me he was married, I did. Sure okay. did see it. And yeah. um, the other thing says, you inserted yourself not thinking about the wife. Did you he ever ask me? He asked, he asked me to help him. He asked me to do the legal side of it because he knew that everybody in his camp wasn't really familiar with this type of stuff and didn't know what to look for. And this was in. That was the real you in, Sonia. This was in September because I, I talked to him in August. So the first couple of weeks, he was cool at first. And then we got to talking. And I was like, well, how your lawyer come to see you? And he was like, no. And I was like, why hasn't your lawyer come to see you? He was like, I don't know. And then I, I just, it just wasn't, the, the lawyer just wasn't doing anything and nobody was calling and checking the lawyers to say, you need to be doing this. You need to do with none of that. It was just nothing. 
no communication with the attorneys. And I was like, man, listen, you can't. I was in the hospital and everybody that with the exception of two nurses and one doctor, everybody else on that staff need to be fired. I said, people be taking jobs they have no business doing. And it's crazy. You would say this person's a lawyer and he gonna do what he's supposed to. People don't do what they're supposed to. They'll take your money like he's going through now with the one lawyer that took his money and did nothing, did nothing. Still hasn't done anything since June on some on his cases that could and his things that can be done because of the time frame. He's done nothing, nothing. So I know that, and I know that from working with lawyers, they take the money and they be like, oh, I hear, I hear, and you know, I don't want you to call, and they don't do the work. So I know you got lawyers that'll take the money and sell themselves and not do anything. And my whole point to him was, what are your people doing? Are they are they there for you? Are they doing everything in the capacity? And he was like, no, they this is not them you know or they don't have the time he was just telling me whatever this the scenario was was people and i was just like well let me know you know because he looked out for me when i was in the hospital but let's go back to that real quick he looked out for you when you were in the hospital he texted you you couldn't talk he was texting you mm -hmm. he didn't know i couldn't talk until like a couple of days later when i was like i got a tube in me uh -huh. um but but yeah, you act and like I don't he was there. Wait, wait, wait. But but when I hear you say the way he showed you, you know, the way he was there for you, because I've heard you say that, you know, hey. in other interviews and stuff. My thought is I didn't realize it was COVID. In my mind, that means he's coming to the hospital, he's sitting with you, he's uh spending time with you, he's you know, helping you with your meals or you know just no, no, I only time. Seen him a couple and, times and in I life. understand wait 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 I understand he couldn't do that because it was COVID which makes yeah. it even worse which means now you couldn't even talk to him on the phone because you had the tube you were texting so how was this nigga really doing anything for you trust me when you sitting up there laid up thinking about you ain't gonna make it out of here and you dying and people that, that like that you've been talking to you know, aren't even picking up the phone to say anything to you via text, via nothing. Um, and then this person you just met who don't owe you anything. And, and you know, we had already had a conversation before I even got sick. We just going to be cool at a distance. Don't ask me for shit. I'm not going to ask you for shit. So he knew it wasn't not like a come up. Like after I get through this, I'm a, you know, he already knew you ain't ever getting anything and I don't ever want anything from you. So all that was established before I got sick. Um, I just feel like he didn't have to be there at all. What was the point in, in calling and asking every day? Because are you okay with the doctor saying? Some men are patient as a motherfucker. Even when I got out, he never asked me for anything. He never asked me for anything. When I got because out, there was no time. It wasn't a much, lot of time in between. You were on the move, and you're back and forth, and and he got other women. He got C two child. He got a lot going on. Wait, no, let me I'm ask kidding. you this. Let me ask you this too couple well let me read these super chats real quick fedora wants to know do you have access to any evidence that's been presented sounds to me like you're saying there hasn't there no evidence they don't been. have any and it's another person that's working on it and trying to get stuff and again nothing's coming up on that end he keeps okay. calling i got it um okay okay yeah. i'll let you go um yeah, I got you gotta go right now is that him uh-oh did I lose her? Oh, that must be him calling. I'm going to take her down, put her in the back. Anyway, well, y'all, oh, thank y'all for hanging in here with me. Hi, Toya. Thank you, Toya Abstract. Great show, V. Lenore. Sonia, please seek therapy. This Dusty has a pattern of it sad that your self-esteem is so low that you can't see truth. I've really, I'll be honest. I know that people have um, a lot of negative opinions about Sonia. I feel like, I don't know her, but I feel like in this case, I mean, she's possibly a victim as well. I mean, she, the, the difference is she may have signed up for it, but I do appreciate her transparency tonight. Um, as much as she did share, I was, oh, I was, I had a couple more questions that, I already knew the answers to because I wanted to see how much she wanted to share with the audience. Uh, but to all of you, thank you. I appreciate she spent two and a half hours with us. Ernesto was calling her 
before and she was going to have him, you know, come on. He can't really talk, talk, but I was curious to hear how, what, you know, what he'd be willing to share about his experience so far. That would have been interesting. But anywho, thank you all for kicking it with me. Oh, also, there's some folks that um, sent cash apps. Thank you so much to those of you that sent a cash app. Um, African Beauty. Um, uh, her daughter. Thank you. Um, it's a couple. Yo, yo, plane. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the cash apps. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you to everybody in the chat. Um, also, if you have any show ideas um, for me or some some just some ideas in general, what you want to see happen on this channel, please feel free to contact me here. All right, y'all. We got 500 in the chat. I don't know what my likes looking like. Tell me. Tell me what my likes looking like, y'all. Can I get them likes looking looking uh, less disrespectful? How about that? <laughs> so if you could put those likes, get, hit the like button on your way out. I want to thank everybody who came out tonight to support. And um, wow. I wonder. Oh, eh. Look, I don't know. I don't know Sonia at all, right? I talked to her yesterday. I've seen her in interviews. I really think she means well with this situation. I um I think she's trying to sort through it, but then again, you don't you never know somebody's somebody's walk. You don't know what their family life is like or you know, just hearing about the shooting alone that was traumatizing just to hear about. I can't imagine having lived through it. And then to later on find yourself having still having medical issues related to that. Trust me, I'm sure that that impacts how you function and how you see life. And like she said, you know, when you don't know if you're going to make it to the next day, sometimes you take chances and do things because you feel like this moment is all I have. I'm not saying that's right. And I don't want to demonize it either because we're all human. But I just pray that if this man is guilty, that she will see the light and she won't be hurt from it, um, but she will learn from it. And that's why I ask, too, what will it take before she realizes? Because what it, she could be right. She could be right. We could be all wrong. This could all be uh, 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 some big big conspiracy to go after Nesta. I don't believe that because I don't see him being a big fish that anybody would want to take down. For what reason? But let's say she finds out that he is guilty. I, again, I just want her to walk away at least learning the lesson and not making that same mistake again because at the end of the day, she's a mother and a grandmother and she's the mother of a daughter and she has a granddaughter. So, you know, these girls are going to be learning from their mama. And I, I want the mama to be strong enough and able to kind of encourage her daughters not to make some of the same mistakes. Because here's the thing. I ain't got to know you and I ain't got to experience everything to learn from it. So hopefully this will be a cautionary tale for all of us. With that said, I want to thank you guys for hanging out. I will be back tomorrow probably to discuss this interview. And... Um, and to talk about what's coming up real soon. All right, y'all. <laughs> Smooshes.